How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? You would figure after all this time, I would learn to turn my microphone or my phone down one day. <laughs> all right. There we go. Hello. How's it going? How is everyone? So, after seven months, I decided to shave. <laughs> so, I know it's shocking. Take it in. <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw the link in the chat for anyone who wants to join. Hello. Hello, everyone. Busy day. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. That's awesome. Ooh, I, I just recently ordered a ton of sewing related stuff. Not to upload a knife unboxing video. I'm with knives like you. Have, okay, so look at the trees. <laughs> I've been wanting to have this conversation for a while. I actually am an avid knife collector and I have all kinds of fun stuff in this room. And um, I have a weird collection of bayonets, um, especially World War One and like World War Two. So I I love your knife videos and that um, the video you recently had about the um, the canvas bag that opens up. I can make that. I, the entire time I was watching that video, I'm like, I'm gonna make that. I'm totally gonna make that. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, but I'm a um because I work because of my job, I definitely uh I have to carry a knife. And I'm like, where's my MacGyver? And I still have my Swiss Army knife that started it all. I've um been carrying this thing for over 20 something years. <laughs> It's been glued back together a couple of times. This is my uh, MacGyver style Swiss Army knife. I I swear by the thing. <laughs> Face blue smile. <laughs> let me um let me throw the link in the chat, Commander. Well, if anybody wants to join, please by all means, trees. Um, anyone wants to join um i was a bit obsessed with macgyver as a kid and then this magical show uh called stargate was on television and i watched stargate um literally through every series and inception they ever had i absolutely love that show <laughs> But MacGyver, like, honestly, MacGyver is good for a little kid to watch, at least back then when we were feral. Like, I was a feral kid. I was allowed to wander around. Now where I live, it's all amusement parks. And um, how's it going? Things are going good. Yeah. Hey, Kilroy. I've been okay. I've been okay. I've been um, sewing my face off. And I had a lot of um, technical problems today with my computer that, like, see, I'm reaching for my chin beer that's not there. <laughs> I had a ton of technical problems today with my computer. It, it just, ugh. I always say, do not buy Apple products. Do not buy Apple products. <laughs> How are you? I kind of all right. I kind of get what you mean about reaching for something that's no longer there. Um, I used I've lost about 20 pounds in the last month. So it's need getting used to not having as big a belly. <laughs> I know exactly my uh because of my lung issues, my weight goes up and down all the time. So I can tell how much I weigh depending on what clothes I can fit into. Hey, Phoenix. I saw you try to jump in earlier. I hope you um, I hope you uh, hop on in if you can. 
Hey, dude, and MacGyver was one of the few action guys that didn't like guns, kid-friendly. That was hardcore about MacGyver, is that he always was like, use your brain. <laughs> you don't have to shoot somebody, use your brain, you know? And I was a total, like, Homer, rah, rah, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen American as a kid. So I, uh, I loved MacGyver. <laughs> Um, that's game? that's a little bit before my time. I never got into it. I remember watching TV and they said, I'm MacGyver, but I never... MacGyver was like late 80s, early 90s, right? Yeah. I I caught like the late the latter seasons and because of, um, well, Paramount Plus, I get to watch every episode, you know? Because there are certain episodes where either I don't remember it or, or I'm like, wow, I was like, you know, four or five when this episode came out. The early, the, the really early episodes. I'm just trying to remember back that far. Oh, I wish I could go back to those times. I would tell my mom to buy Apple and then dump it at its peak. <laughs> I have an identic memory. They would lock me up. I would be like, don't do this. Go over here. Don't go over here. You know, like, don't get on a plane on September 11th. Like, I, I would be all over the place. Same. Same, Gilroy. I watched a... Um, Phoenix is saying device not connected. Ah, oh, StreamYards is so um, janky sometimes. Um, I was obsessed with A Team when I was a kid. <laughs> I Mr. was uh, T and all that. Absolutely, there, there's a uh, um, Vons, which uh, is a Safeway everywhere else by my house, and it used to be a hospital. And there's a picture. I have a signed picture of Mr. T holding me. <laughs> <laughs> I I was like one or two. <laughs> I uh, I loved the eighteen. That was my show. But I I grew up in a weird era. Um, pre I always say pre internet, but like because there was nothing else on, all the reruns from all the different eras were on television. Like I loved Hawaii Five O, like the original one, um, Emergency, the show from the sixties, I think, or seventies. I loved that show. I think when I was 10 or 11, I got sick and I spent most of that year at home. And I remember Battlestar Galactica. The original? Yes. Where they, the, you have the flying toasters and they load the same um, scenes, you know, same you know, relatively high budget takeoff scenes and fighter scenes or whatever, but they just kept reusing them because they were so high budget they couldn't afford to make new ones constantly. I um, and I, Starbuck and all the oh, where you know where they're all Egyptian <laughs> spacemen, and I just think that Jordi or Sakalo or God, who who else is there with ancient aliens? I think uh, Battlestar Galactica melted their brains, or maybe they were already full of shit. It's um, oh, I've read Eric von Donneken's book. Um, they just do not want to give credit to the ancients. They do not. They do not want to give credit to the pe people who could figure something out that we can't. That's really what it is. And that's that is so human. It's not even funny. Like that's that's basic human. <laughs> oh, well, if I can't figure it out, then no one else could. Well, these people figured it out. I, and well, uh, a lot of those ancient alien things are stupid. And you know, like if you go to Puma Pinka, right? And then there's this one uh, stone that they say was perfectly square. Some dude took a machinist square yes. and put it to the place where it was perfectly square and then moved it an inch and then, oh, shit, you can see daylight. It's almost like they're cherry-picking and they say 
it's granite, but it's not granite. It's something softer. And they could even work granite just with copper and sand. I mean, how do you think, um, you know, with phenolic laps, right? Phenolic or steel laps, you can cut diamonds. You have diamond powder and you impregnate the metal with it and the diamond cuts it. I, it's again the um Va von Donnegan all answer is always then aliens and he is the godfather of this crazy theory because everybody else is quoting his books and the, that whole ancient alien thing drives me crazy if um if you're ever bored there's a video on YouTube called ancient aliens debunked it's like a two or three hour movie this guy goes in detail and shows where they're wrong I, I recently watched it. It just to uh, infuriate myself really quickly. Um, Kilroy, those 1970s shows had um, really hardcore themes and they did not mess around. All those shows were like that. I'm watching a show right now. If you're watching my videos, you can tell it's um, about Afro Caribbean people. And the issues that they talk about in this show are so, so hardcore compared to what people deal with nowadays. And I love Buck Rogers. I absolutely love Buck Rogers. Do you ever watch those videos of Amish dudes picking up a barn and moving it? It totally, it, I totally believe that hundreds of thousands of people could build those huge things. I agree. Do you know what's so funny? I literally gave the same speech to my son yesterday <laughs> when I was telling him about human ingenuity. Like, we do not give ourselves enough credit on this planet. We do not. We do not, not at all. And I have seen Amish guys um, build a house. It's insane. <laughs> That's what I was telling Isaiah. Um, I was telling my son, like, I kind of want to get an Amish style house. And, and the first thing he said was without the plugs. <laughs> and I said, man, we could, add, we could add the plugs. Von Daniken, here's proof that it wasn't the space aliens, that the <laughs> penguins are in fact the space aliens who educated mankind. <laughs> Penguins are less scary than dolphins. Could you imagine if dolphins were the superior species? Oh, they're so scary. <laughs> well, there have been incidences where people go and like, oh, come swim with the dolphins. And then... <laughs> The dolphin loves you way too much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, a dolphin will beat you. Uh, it's like um, I grew up in the era of Shamu, where everybody thought killer whales were these sweet, kind um, animals. They are the they're they're worse than sharks. They are the sharks of the ocean. <laughs> That's why they're called killer whales. They they, <laughs> they will grab seals thrash them around, play with their carcasses, and then eat them. And it's just that humans never wound up on their um, diet because humans are way too bony and, you know, we're just not something that they want to eat, but the orca will still crush you and if it gets pissed off it will drown you at sea world if you're a f***ing idiot who wants to get into 50 degree water <laughs> with the um, killer whale right you're going to hide in the bathroom and then you're going to go and like swim with them in 50 degree water that without proper wetsuit you'll be dead in 30 minutes so yeah, exactly. You know, I'm not what I would consider like a bleeding heart lefty, but I'm one of those people who, who is like, get rid of all zoos, get rid of all aquariums. I They just, um, I used to take Isaiah to the zoo every year when he was younger and it's an affordable place. The Los Angeles Zoo is amazing. And, and, and I'm not saying anything against it. I still get their, their email every time a monkey is born because I signed up. But it got depressing after a while. Like all the animals, it just looked like a uh, really well kept animal prison. And like if you in the gorilla exhibit at the LA Zoo, the gorilla just sits there. Like he's like, I'm an apex predator and I'm stuck in this cage. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, <laughs> there's an ethical argument for <laughs> not building more, but like PETA wanted to commit atrocities against all the animals at SeaWorld by buying them, the animals, you know, and letting all the dolphins and the orcas that have never known how to take care of themselves in the wild free to starve to death because they don't have the proper behaviors to learn how to feed themselves. Isn't that what happened to Keiko, a.k.a. Um, Willie from the movie uh, Free Willie? I'm not sure, but if you let an animal that has basically knows only um, let me perform tricks and I get fed out into the wild, they're not going to know how to feed themselves. So I get the argument as to not, you know, creating new, um, you know, not going out and getting wild animals and not building any new um, aquariums or whatever but um, as far as how do you deal with the existing living things that they don't know how to take care of themselves in the wild and their offspring certainly probably are never going to be able to you're under an obligation to care for those animals. Like what SeaWorld did in San Diego is they're no longer taking any animals out of the ocean. They're just keeping the ones that they've raised in captivity, which is well, admirable. That's what I mean. Well, you know, and, and that's what they're basically doing. They're phasing out, at least aquariums are doing that. Um, I've been to the aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. First off, it is not as big as I thought it was. They have this commercial. If you live in Los Angeles, it's on every fourth or fifth commercial if you watch a sporting event or anything. And you go there, and it's tiny. <laughs> but um, it seems to me like they're getting new fish. But a lot of those places, they help injured animals. So there's... You know, our species does, we do good things, but we also do overfish, overpopulate, and drive species away from their natural habitat. That's what we do as humans. Honestly, um, as human beings, what do we produce besides trash? What is our. Um, like, like... <laughs> uh, I can't really. Uh, we produce sociopaths. But... <laughs> we. We exactly we per, um <laughs> I, I I got in trouble a while ago in a live stream that uh shall not be named because I used to always say the human race is trash monkeys. And there's that argument. I know where we come from the great apes, and I know and and I I say monkey more as a as a funny thing, but we are monkeys and we produce trash. So like if there was another species, like this is the bonobo. The, this is the trash monkey. <laughs> well, I kind of get that, and I think it's funny. And anyone who would be offended by that. <laughs> I was told I was out of line, but, but, um, and I recently saw a map. This is another thing I got trashed for a long time ago. Um, I recently saw a map of all the satellites and junk that we have launched around this planet. We have a halo of garbage surrounding us. We are literally like that planet in Stargate that had a bunch of satellites surrounding it. Like, Remember <laughs> Wally? Remember yes. the opening of Wally <laughs> and the Kessler syndrome? It's a real thing and it will eventually cripple our economies and communication. And Musk is just, um, well, Starlink is a prime example. Because like they started painting them black, so that the the Starlink satellites black, so that they wouldn't be as visible and people wouldn't complain about them. And then they started overheating and going offline. And um, as a stargazer, I I have I really talk about this. I own nine telescopes. If you you if you get a telescope that's over two hundred dollars, you can play spot the satellite. <laughs> And if you and your um your cell phone will tell you when the ISS goes over, which is spectacular if you get it on a on a telescope. But you um you can see the trash. 
if you back up, you really have to back up. I'm obsessed with the um, with the with the Little Dipper because I'm on the West Coast, so I can constantly see it depending on what time of year. It's either uh, upside down or right side up depending on what time of year it is. I am not that familiar with astronomy, and that I haven't really done used a telescope in ten years. Kilroy Elon Musk has destroyed Tesla. I own a couple Tesla things that I like do not like to talk about. Um, he's destroyed his own. He's destroyed the stock. Twitter, if. <laughs> Twitter has gone down the tubes. And you know what? I'm not easily offended, but I also um, don't like it when just navigating through the sea of angry teenagers on Twitter. I like looking at Orion's belt. Absol absolutely, Alibaba. You remind me of a funny story. Um, whenever I would drive to Las Vegas at night, I would always pull over because people who grow up in the city, um, it's an experience when you see the actual Milky Way, when you look up in the sky and you see, when you see the universe. And there was one time I pulled on the wrong side of the road and I pulled off um, near Edwards Air Force Base and they own hundreds of miles of property. So basically, if you're headed east, coming from Los Angeles, anything south is owned by the United States um, Air Force. Anything north is unincorporated desert that you could go in. I didn't know this at the time. I pulled over and six MPs gave me six MPs gave me the option to either leave or not leave. <laughs> and I jumped in my car and left. <laughs> But it's well, beautiful. Well, yeah. <laughs> Wise, I've actually never seen the Milky Way, you know, in, you know, that band of brightness in person, you know, because I live on the East Coast and there's not really much of any place, at least that I've seen, where it's light enough. I mean, it's dark enough where you could see it. I, I have to drive 200 miles away from here. I, I, in you know, I have to drive out in the middle of the desert. But when you're going to a place like Las Vegas or um, I lived in Phoenix when I was a kid, you can do the same thing. I've I've actually gone back in my adult life and pulled over and wowed people like a magician. Like you want to see something cool, turn off the headlights and it and, it, and there's the universe, you know. And, you know. Over at the Shills, um, when we used to do more um, just pointing and laughing at stupid, you know, when people would put their stupid videos up and we just laugh at it and they were like, why is the Milky Way in every shot of the night sky? <laughs> See, I couldn't hang with people like that. I would literally just laugh at them. I would be like, you're not serious. You're not serious. Come on. Hey, Sitch he, he couldn't hey. figure out because that's the fucking galaxy we live in. <laughs> yeah. You, oh, wow. See, I wouldn't have nothing nice to say to someone like that. How's it going, Skid? <laughs> I quit following a lot of subreddits lately because I realized that they were basically a lot of either angry or nervous teenagers and they were all pissing me off. Same. Same. I can't handle these like sketchy, angry people. And that's the one thing um, about the internet. It's sometimes you invite this angst and hatred into your life. And I'm too old for all that. <laughs> and then those angry teenagers, if they don't grow up, turn into Andrew Tate and then they wind up in a Romanian prison. Um, okay. See? They went to Eastern Europe to find manly men, right? And then they wind up in a <sighs> Romanian prison and then they find the manliest men, uh, you know. <laughs> what? But then they become the bitches. 
It's, you know, I think about this all the time because um, I was raised by what, was, what would be considered like a hardcore manly man. My dad had a giant bayonet scar across the chest. Like he he smoked a pipe. He was a hardcore dude. But like he didn't care about things like that. <laughs> Quite honestly, he was, to me, being a man is being yourself and, um, like, being able to be around people regardless of the situation. But that's being an adult, though. And well, I, that's uh, part of it. Otherwise, you're a little... <laughs> and, you know, I'm not saying that I... Like, there are people that I do not get along with on the internet. Do you know what happens? They make hate, hate videos about me and I move on with my life. I go back to watching Mary Beard and all the weird stuff that I watch on YouTube, you know? Like, it, it, ugh, I just, I don't get it. Andrew Tate really boggles my mind. Am I right or wrong? Was he a UFC fighter? I don't or know. I kickboxer? know he was always a, he was a kickboxer, I Okay. Think. Okay, because he was famous in, 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 at least I knew him from kickboxing because I love watching obscure stuff in languages that I can't speak. And so I knew him from kickboxing. I, so when I, when I saw all this stuff about him, like within the past two years, I, I don't like saying toxic masculinity because that term is overused. But he is the toxic avenger. Well, oh, there's okay. a there's a difference between being a man and being a douchebag. You I see, agree. Andrew Tate says, "Well, I I used to be an atheist, but I found religion, and now I have to figure out what religion I want." And then he talks about how the Sikhs haven't fucked anyone up in a few hundred years, so he had to find a religion that would allow him to be a douchebag, is which that is why he, quite a few. But is that's that why. why. He constantly posts on, um, I clicked on one of his things once and you know, Twitter shows me all this business now. And I saw this one um, tweet where he was talking about Allah and I'm like, bro, you're, you were born in America and you lived in Luton. So yeah, that's <laughs> why there's Islam because, um, well, I'm not going to be insulting to Muslims who, live their lives and just want to live in peace with their neighbors kind of in the same way the I'm not talking about modern day Moors you know all the sausage I'm talking about like before Isabella and Ferdinand when um, Islam used to be known as the religions of tolerance where Jews and Christians and Muslims at least in Spain used to be able to get along without killing each other up until Isabella and Ferdinand but like if you I, I don't in other words if you're a Muslim I'm not immediate and you're not a douchebag I'm not immediately he wants to live like it's the, he wants to live like it's the 14th century is that what you're trying to say no if he wanted to live like the 14th century um Spanish you know Muslims in Spain he wouldn't he would never put up with that kind of not being a douchebag. No, he, he wants to live like the fucking Taliban. Oh, okay. So he just wants to be abusive and have everyone listen to him and not listen to anyone else. Yes. <laughs> it intrigues me because um, I like, I come from a long line of really positive dudes who are like, who served, in, and, I, and I didn't serve in the military, but actually my cousin and I are the only two people to not serve in the military in with our last names since the Revolutionary War. I grew up in a military family, and they were not necessarily toxic human beings, so it's weird to me what people think it is to be a man nowadays. Part is kind of that tiny, tiny group of people who said, I'm Orthodox now because pussy and my... <laughs> I, you know what? Um, I talk about this all the time. When I was younger, I tried to become a, a, an NOI, Nation of Islam, Muslim. And I uh, really quick, 
really quick, I realized the only reason that they were accepting me was because I was from the suburbs and, and I could be used as a token. Because in any other term, they would have considered me whitewashed and like they, they considered me so far out from the realm that they didn't even want me in their religion. But because they could use me as a token, they totally accepted me. <laughs> and then I realized I, I came from really rigid parents that were Catholic. And then I realized how many rules there was in Islam. And I was like, nope, I'm not joining that religion. I just wanted and to, piss to be off quite me. honest, I don't know a lot about Islam, probably more than most Americans who are not Muslims, but certainly not enough to be a true um, authority on the subject. The NOI is more about um, the NOI is more about. Um, oh, did, did I? OK, good. I almost put Kilroy in a timeout clicking too much. <laughs> and see, that's the thing, Kilroy. I watched um, a bunch, like in the early 90s, there were a bunch of like hardcore um, black power movies. And because I didn't live around anyone who looked like me that wasn't in my family, I would go out seeking crazy organizations and for belonging, not realizing that they treated me like Carlton Banks. <laughs> I was literally like the 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 middle class Carlton Banks. <laughs> and that's the thing. Um, a lot of these organizations are more about um, presentation than, than they're not about doctrine or anything, especially the offshoots, because the NOI, it's an American religion. It was starred by Faraj Muhammad um, in Detroit. In the um, and Elijah Muhammad in the 1940s, so it's a, it's it's literally an American religion. I did not know that. That's the I, whole. Of, oh, sorry. Go ahead. There were a bunch of people, and any religion can be uh, bastardized and used for. Um, Hey, I'm just when you were talking about how they were like fringe, there was this one guy, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, in Miramar, Florida. Now that means God, son of God. He mm -hmm. claimed to be a Jew. I think this was the start of the black Israelites. Um, the FBI eventually took him down because he was selling drugs out of the temple, wound up chopping people's heads off when they wanted to leave the religion. And having people gunned down in the streets. I think I watched a documentary about that. Like at two or three in the morning. I fall into these weird rabbit holes. I, I really feel like I've seen a documentary about that. The, um, <coughs> excuse me. We have um, people who are actually African American who are um, Jewish here. A large population. And then we have the Hebrew Israelites who stand on the street corner and yell at people. And anyone who wants to challenge me on that, like I've been doxxed, you know where I live. <laughs> but like, yeah, because you know it. it's like not an ethnicity, it's a religion, but exactly. it can be, it can go on so long in a family, it becomes part of your identity and you wind up having to get tested for. Let's just say when you marry your cousin so often, sometimes you get Albert Einstein and sometimes you get Ernest P. Worrell. Exactly. Um, but I, I, I like throwing the distinction because um, the uh, Hebrew Israelites, I consider a fringe uh, fraction. And so, it's not even part of it. It's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But if you ask them, they'll tell you that they are better than or above. And I, 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 when I was idealistic and in my twenties, um, I'd walk by and tell those guys like, you're wrong. And then just keep walking really fast. And I got into a few arguments with those guys, but like, they're so stuck in their ways. Um, you know, they don't want to hear anything. They, they don't want to hear it, you know? And there's almost like, no, here's. The closest thing, if you look at Christianity in Ethiopia, it would be a really, some of it would be a really close analog to 
close to the traditions, uh, close to the style of worship, et cetera, of um, Judaism pre-Christianity because I forget what it was, but I think because of the um, Roman Empire collapsing and what off, it was culturally cut off mm -hmm. um, from the, you know, from main body of Christianity and main body of um, Judaism. And there are definitely some people who became you know, who joined Judaism or married into the family, so to speak, back in the, um, you know, back in those days. But the idea that, I'm sorry. Um, let me read that? that. I'm reading. Oh, you you tried it. You were a matchmaker. Oh, Trey Stark and others. The matchmaking matchmaker's job is more as a geneticist in the Ashkenazi population. And for those who don't know, Ashkenazi would be like anything east of the Rhine River, and not necessarily in. Um, Italy, because Italy would be considered Sephardic Jews. In fact, North Africa and African Jews and um, Jews in, in like, um, I'm not going to say, I'm not saying Palestine, but like in um, Iraq and Iran and in that area, they, I think they'd be considered Sephardic. Yes. Wow, that, that's... Uh, not all uh, Jews are white, not all Jews are black, not all... You could have pink or purple polka dot Jews. If yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, like, in my lineage, my, um, let's see, my grandmother lived to be 99 years old, okay? Her father was kicked out of um, Spain for being Jewish. And he was, but they didn't want, uh, basically they sent him to Mexico to help occupy Mexico. I have a picture. But before I, I show the picture, <laughs> he was basically told to uh, um, do whatever he wants in Mexico and never come back to Spain. He had uh, 12 daughters and one son. And everybody in my family um, was Catholic. He s remained um, Jewish. And everybody else was Catholic. You want to know something fun? I'm not going to dox myself. But I don't have any Jews on my dad's side. They all come from my mommy. And to the best of my knowledge, my dad's side wasn't Jewish. But I still got stuck with a Jewy last name from them. <laughs> last names are funny. My last name is Swiss. <laughs> Extremely Swiss. <laughs> and and in a weird way, um, on the East Coast of America, um, a lot of African American people have my last name. <laughs> I'm going to go get that picture real quick. The um, skits, you're, you're killing me right now. Yes, the elusive polka dot Jew. <laughs> uh. Though they should probably see a doctor, but. <laughs> you know what? You know, that's actually kind of not funny because I am. Uh, extremely allergic to a lot of things and a long time ago I went to a party and I was like wow this is the greatest dip I've ever had in my life and I was eating it and everybody was looking at me I was breaking out in white spots you were breaking out in hives from an allergic reaction yeah and but I um because I'm a walking talking science experiment I always have an EpiPen on me 
and so um, my ex lit- literally grabbed it and jabbed and jabbed it. <laughs> but yeah, I was I instantly broke out in hives and scared everybody at the party. But so I became polka dots. I don't know if this will if this will show, but this was my my great grandfather because my grandmother lived to be almost a hundred years old. But let's see if this comes out. Can you see that? Yeah. So the man. Which with, one is he? The one pouring the drink. Oh, there you go. I can see it. He. Um, this is. Um, part, this is superimposed from a larger picture. He was a bandito, and um, a lot of people. I'm gonna say something that's very Californian. Every um, every other Mexican person claims that their grandfather rode with Pancho Villa, but if you don't have pictures, you do not have proof because they took a lot. Pancho Villa took a lot of pictures, <laughs> and my my father um, was a family historian on both sides of my family, so I know a lot. I know. Um, I know so much. Uh, I will. I know a lot about the African American side because somebody got a PhD and the entire family got involved. And they're a professor at Ohio State University. That person and I, we have the exact same name. <laughs> so there's a lot of people I went to high school with that think that I, I'm a professor at Ohio State University. <laughs> <laughs> But um, he was kicked out of um, Spain. And it always makes me laugh. They were like, you have to live in Mexico because we don't want the Mexican people to overpopulate. So they basically controlled where he was going. And that kind of like sucks because on one hand, he was singled out to have to leave because he could but then he was basically sent to um, oppress other people. Yes, exactly. And the occupation is funny that way. Yes, she find, she did finally get to stab me. <laughs> Kilroy, I actually have a great story, but I don't think it's safe for YouTube. <laughs> did you know Pancho Villa took a lot? Didn't know. I have to dig through... Um, he took a ton. He was at my um, great grandfather's wedding <laughs> and took a picture of it. And he's like, he's a big dude. He ate well. I don't know how that man rode a horse. As somebody who rides a horse, I do not know how that man rode a horse. <laughs> he was a big, big dude. <laughs> But yeah, I have a ton of um, pictures, a ton, and a lot of um, Civil War pictures, a lot of Reconstruction pictures. I have a picture of um, 19, was my pops was born, 1939, 1940s Savannah, um, Georgia. I have a newspaper clipping, the, um, the United States Navy caught a German U-boat off the coast of Georgia and they marched every single person off the boat. And in the picture is my, my father, well, my grandfather, cause my father, he also was from a different era. I was an oops baby. Um, my grandfather was holding him and they were watching all the Nazis being, they basically marched the Nazis through the black neighborhood. <laughs> On to their, to their, where their camp was going to be. There's a whole documentary about it. It's awesome. My, my dad's in it. I have relatives who had documentaries for them. Um, one relative on my dad's side was John Wesley Powell. He was the first Caucasian to chart the Colorado River. That's awesome. And a champion of the Native peoples, abolitionist. And in 2020, no one um, vandalized his statue because he wasn't a monster. Mm-hmm. Well, if, if you <clears throat> don't want your statues vandalized, then don't be a monster, right? Yeah. 
Oh, when they were tearing down Captain Cook statues and all that, I had to get off the internet when they were tearing down statues. Because if you look at the history behind these people, you wouldn't have them in your house. You wouldn't you wouldn't even want them in your neighborhood. <laughs> oh yeah. Um take, take John Smith, for example. Over at um the um I'm trying to remember York. I'm trying to remember it's the Yorktown Visitor Center, whatever. Um the James it's basically near Yorktown, Virginia. It's on the beach near a um, uh, near the bridge that goes over the river. Um, there's a, and they say, let me let's have a history of John Smith. And then it talks about how he took one of his native companions who basically, um, you know, they were having a bloody war or whatever with them. And there were some natives who could be bought or whatever. And he basically um, used his companion as a arrow shield. Um, and you realize, okay, the reason why this guy survived is because he was a piece of shit. That's like Columbus. Do you know um, Christopher Columbus was such a piece of garbage that he got exiled by Catholics? I want you to think about that. <laughs> As someone who was raised Roman Catholic, Christopher Columbus was so awful, he got exiled on Hispaniola. <laughs> By his and, own people. <laughs> well, I mean, have you heard of Bartholomew de las Casas? I believe I have. Um, he basically was a patron saint of the native peoples because he basically chronicled the crimes of the conquistadors and then wound up complaining about it. <laughs> but I mean, no no wonder the conquistadors were told, go over there, because they were horrible. They, cre they collected 12 of the chieftains plus the chief of, you know, the plus the most influential chief on uh, basically what amounts to the island of Cuba <laughs> and basically burn them to death in honor of the 12 disciples and Jesus. Oh my and, yikes. And um, De Las Casas chronicled that and complained about it and protested it and um, <sighs> if you can't read about I don't think they allow that book that I learned about De Las Casas in the um, community college system in Virginia because of white fragility. Could you imagine if the Dutch had, um, or yeah, if the Dutch had um, founded America or if a, like somebody besides the Puritans? Um, weed would be legal and um, we'd be a lot more laid back. <laughs> I heard a comedian go off about this one time, but I think about it seriously all the time. Like, if we were founded by somebody else. But a lot of these countries were continuing the same thing that um, England was, so it's not like they wouldn't be much of the same. <coughs> but England... The Puritans did... were a special bunch of fanatic. Oh, yeah. Like I said, you have to be a special kind of a-hole to get kicked out by people who are literally conquering and destroying the planet at the time. This is why I'm leaving this comment up. Um, I read the book. I was um, fresh out of high school in college, and I read the book, Lies My Teacher Told Me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lies My Teacher Told Me. It was the first edition of it, and it talked about the um, smallpox, smallpox blankets. I used, to, I used to know the guy's name, but the, as the years um, go on, I forget the man's name. But it was the strategic. And it was genocide. Mm -hmm. Then they went in there and they killed the survivors. And then um, 300 years later, uh, Meriwether Clark wrote in his uh, journal that there's more Native Americans in Portland, Oregon than in all of the states combined in America. I, I was obsessed with Lewis and Clark 
Um, and then I eventually ended up moving to Oregon, <laughs> which is Lewis and Clark country, you know? And so, um, I'm, I'm not a, necessarily a giant history buff about, uh, Lewis and Clark, but I know a lot about them. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, uh, you know, the horrible crap that was done. Um, Pennsylvania, was almost free of Indian, you know, Indian wars as a colony of Britain up until the revolution when the Quakers basically gave up power. Because what the Quakers did was they said, if you want the land the natives are on, you have to pay for it. You can't kill them and you can't coerce a sale. And if you do, we're going to come and throw you in the stocks or kill you. And it turned out that um, not killing people and taking their land or not coercing sales and, you know, led to peace, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a, um, there, what, who, I can't remember the comedian that said it, but there's a joke that um, when the Europeans came to um america the native the native americans invited them to dinner when the europeans came to australia and the aborigines invited them to dinner <laughs> when the europeans came to africa the africans invited them to dinner <laughs> you know i think you know the punchline of that joke <laughs> Spain and Mexico owned a large portion of the country where I am now. There are individuals whose family is Mexican that has lived on this land longer than my family has been here. That leads me to the speech of my lineage. Um, my father was from Georgia, and he was the definition of what we would consider African-American. Like, my father looked like he, he was an all for all intent and purposes, my father was an African. There's no distinction between the way he looked and someone from Africa did. I am like, what, fourth generation removed, you know? My mother's ancestors are Basque. <laughs> there, well, there's contention in my family because my grandparents were born in Mexico. And if you were to ask them, they would say, we're Mexican. And I speak Mexican Spanish. But my grandfather's lineage is Basque. And my grandmother, for being born in Mexico, she was white. She was a white person. And so, lineage is funny that way. 90% of, no of North Americans died from smallpox as they, as they moved in. Yes, and it took them 300 years to figure that out. I, I watched a weird documentary where they were um, basically filling in the blanks because people were asking, like, where did all the Native Americans go? As the years went on, they were like, where did all the Native Americans go? And they were slowly moving west. And it really wasn't until uh, Lewis and Clark came to Oregon did they realize um, the extent of how many people lived in America. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, hey, see, uh, this is where the cool kids are hanging out, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This going... is the, the drama free zone. We're just here to have fun. We're just here to have a good time. Yeah, <laughs> talk about some genocides. And... <laughs> <laughs> no drama. I was, I was trying to keep it light, but it always goes to genocide. It always, it always goes to genocide. <laughs> So I don't miss about hanging out with people from the UK. Do you know, as Americans, we would like Americans and people from the UK, we would, I would always get in this weird argument of like what country committed the most atrocities. And I, and I, and I'm always like, how about we just stop committing atrocities guys <laughs> or bragging about them for real. How are you commander? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. Thank you. Hey, Sydney. Oh, hi, Sydney. I'm sorry I brought the conversation so to a bad topic. 
Well, I want to bring up something else. Let's uh, completely change it to something that's um, affecting all of us. I almost went and bought a balloon, but then I called my local uh, balloon stop and they're like, bro, your thought's not original. We literally sold out of all white balloons. <laughs> How do you guys feel about um, all the balloons that are being chucked over? Uh, and keep in mind, Skits Crasher and Phoenix and I, we're like on the West Coast. <laughs> They could easily drop a balloon with something else on it over us. <laughs> For real. Like, it, it's interesting. Like, like I'm sure, like, China has technology and, and satellites that can see a tattoo on a gnat's ass. Why do they need to float something over us? Like, it's, what, what data can the they water. not collect? They're testing the water. It's they're it's testing the thing with the bully. how far they can go. Yeah. And okay. if you don't punch a bully, the bully's going to take your lunch money and send balloons over your backyard. <laughs> Fair and enough. Canada, Fair enough. Canada's shot a few down. They're not, it's not just one balloon, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Trudeau uh, thanked the United States for shooting it down. And like, if there's one thing we're good at, it's shooting stuff. Let's be real, though. As someone who grew up like um, in a Navy family, kind of Navy aficionado, we run exercises with the Canadian Navy in their own water. Like, we, <laughs> we tell them what to do. We're like, oh, Alaska's over there. So we're kind of in here, too, even though this is your water. <laughs> <laughs> Canada is also part of NATO, so you still do want to... Let, let's just face it, America is at least half, if not 60% of the material and most of the backbone of NATO. I agree, Alibaba, the balloons are absolutely strange. And you know what, Kilroy, I completely forgot about this, yes... Yes, there's um, documented pictures and everything. I completely forgot about that. Wait, move that before I kick that. And picture. I guess wasn't that like one of the concerns about about shooting it over the actual you know territory you know uh, of the United States is what could possibly be on it. Like, what if it was something dirty, be it biological or nuclear? See, I'm old school American. I'm like shoot it down, shoot it down. Um, I read the Scientific American, and do you know how disappointed I was when I read an article basically stating that if there was an alien ship in our orbit, we would not be able to nuke it because whatever that ship was made of would rain down on our planet and probably destroy the whole planet. <laughs> I was like, oh, crud. We'd have to like... Send Marines up there. Tell them to move. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. There's this whole article about how basically if something came um, in low orbit of our planet, we would not be able to nuke it because um, even our own nuclear radiation would rain down on the planet. Well, there's another <laughs> alternative that they accidentally learned about during a nuclear test when a... Um, steel door to the um, hole that they dug wound up flying off at such a tremendous, I forget what speed it was, but it could actually like hit an object in orbit very quickly. In fact, that door is now in, that door reached escape velocity. Ali Baba Furball, in no way am I yeah. insulting the Canadian Navy in no way, shape, or form. And in 2005, at, during Fleet Week in Portland, Oregon, I walked up to, I think it was called HMS Oriole. I saluted and started singing um, A British Tar by Gilbert and Sullivan, and the entire crew sang with me. So I respect the Canadian Navy in no way, shape, or form. Am I talking trash? And I will spare you by singing a British tar is a soul ring soul. <laughs> but it was awesome because every single person knew the words to the song. So much respect. 
Much respect. <laughs> <laughs> the requirement for the you know their basic training. Well, um, Mark, the article I read basically said that if it was in the gravitational pull of our planet, it would slowly um, just come back. Like our our planet would slowly bring it into it into our atmosphere. So anything. Like what's happening with those real um, those old satellites? They're like, oh, by the way, um, a Chinese satellite launched in 1965 might fall over your house. So heads up, kids. <laughs> that one kind of scared me recently when they were like, oh, well, we've been tracking it, so it's not going to fall in your house. <laughs> Especially if, uh, as you said, it's in, in low Earth orbit, then there's definitely possibility of you know the nuclear fallout and things like that. Not fallout, but you know what I mean. <laughs> well, we could just dig a giant hole, put a heavy object on top of it, detonate a nuke, and that way we could kind of predict where the um, where the fallout would be, rather than have it cover the entire planet mm -hmm. and I, take it out that way. I um, I just wish the Stargate was real. Then you could just send a team up there and stop them. I watched, grew up watching way too much television. Way too much. Stargate <laughs> SG-1. I, I am one of those geeks. I own um, all the DVDs. I own all the reboots, all the offshoots. I'm a geek. I'm a geek with a credit card. <laughs> That's I scary. stopped <laughs> caring about Stargate when they did the Atlantis spinoff. Atlantis is awesome though And that was um, Jason Momoa is in it And he's fresh out of um, And Joe Flanagan I believe they were in Days of Our Lives I believe I got, I'm probably wrong They were in one of those um, soap operas together That's actually a really good show Stargate Atlantis is a really good show But I'm a homer Like I, I love sci-fi So I, I, those shows helped me through some hard times in my life. <laughs> Literally, if there was a fire, I would, um, I would grab, there's like a giant safe over here and I would grab that and my, um, my, um, my Stargate Atlantis. I'm kind of kidding. <laughs> I'd grab my computer, my social security card my birth certificate, my ID, and get the hell out. <laughs> the F-22 was the only fighter that could do almost what the Arrow could. I saw an awesome Dan Aykroyd movie about the Arrow. I don't know the Avro name of Arrow. Oh my gosh, I love that movie. <laughs> oh, I... you're talking about something fictional. Well, it, it's a Dan Aykroyd uh, movie. It was a um, pro Canada movie. I back in the day before um, digital cable, there was this thing called Rabbit Ears. For anyone who doesn't know, <laughs> and when I lived in Portland, Oregon, I did not have cable. I had Rabbit Ears, and so I would watch like the movie of the week. You know, after the local news was over on Sunday, and I watched this really hardcore. Um, um, a uh, Dan Aykroyd movie about how the Canadians were the first ones to invent what we consider the modern jet. We know in World War II that the Nazis created the jet. We all heard the story about someone was flying by and a 17-year-old kid was flying a jet. But the era was like the first viable um, um, actual uh, jet fighter, like what we consider like the F-16, 17, you know. I thought the Avro Aero actually never hit production because it used so much titanium and the Soviets had infiltrated the production facility so well that it was deemed such a security risk to actually go ahead with the production because the, they, there was so much espionage. So um, in lower orbit, the radiation would fall, but it would be so dispersed. I, I think about, I, you know, I um, once Scientific America told me that I couldn't nuke a ship from orbit. I'm like, oh, great. Put your head between your legs. <laughs> that reminds me of the rods from God's space super wagon they never built. You know, I don't know if they ever built it now. Um, it might have just been a Ben Aykroyd movie. We 
but we can fully predict where the waste. Okay. So what um, Phoenix is talking, I, I believe there is a valley in Canada that they went to when this um, an iceberg melted and they found a bunch of nuclear waste with the property of the United States of America on it. Because we dump our, we dump our shit everywhere. <laughs> it's days of our oh, lives. Oh, there's places mm -hmm. off the East Coast where um, they just put nuclear waste in oil barrels filled with cement and said, fuck it, no one's going to find it, goodbye. And... Um, Oh, Ollie Baba for a ball, you have me. Um, my, I am, I'm the youngest, and so I used to hang out with my mom, and she was obsessed with Days of Our Lives. <laughs> so you're you're taking me back. You're taking me back. I think it's still on television. I could be wrong. Alexa, is Days of Our Lives still on television? From the list dot com, in early August, twenty twenty two. NBC announced that Days of Our Lives would no longer be airing oh. on the network, but would instead stream exclusively on the Peacock app. Peacock is garbage. Soon <laughs> Isn't it like, wasn't, is it Days of Our Lives or one of those soap operas? It's like the longest running show like ever. Yeah, because it went from a radio show and to, to a television show. I believe it's until as... About, the, until 2023. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I believe it's as the world turns, but I could be wrong. That's kind of stupid thing that you put on your nuclear waste that you don't. <laughs> I, they have pictures. They have pictures. Uh, America doesn't give a F. Uh, that's why I try to tell people, like, we're proud of everything. I've, like, I've gotten quite a few arguments with people, and they're like, Americans are this and this, and I'm, like, kind of like, eh, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> uh, you can't, at, at a certain point, if you, you could take responsibility, but you can't like take the licks for people um, from the past for what they did. You know, it is in West New York, and they knew it was going there. Longest is Meet the Press. I used to watch that as a kid. I used to love. I was a total um, political geek as a kid. Then I got peyote shut up my nose in college, and and just could care less after that. There. Skits, you never, um, you never experimented with anything crazy in the military. You didn't do that green stuff in Thailand that they showed on uh, the No Effects documentary. Green stuff in Thailand? <laughs> no. I, I watched a documentary about a band called No Effects, and they, they were like, "Oh, I don't know if this stuff's legal." And I'm like, "You're doing illicit drugs on television. That's so punk." And they're old. They're like older than me. <laughs> You know, no, I, I was I was part of the 82nd. They were they were pretty pretty straight narrow. Uh, they were the all Americans, uh, and we got drug tested a lot. <laughs> but no, uh, I, I'm not. You know, I waited till after I was out to start messing around with all that fun stuff. Phoenix, they oh, were, okay. they were no, they were snorting this green stuff. They were like. And then they were like, oh, man, this stuff's real. They're like, I don't know what it's doing, but it's doing something. <laughs> it was crazy. Because in Thailand, um, drugs are super illegal. And they were just saying, like, if we get caught, we're going to jail for this one. And the idiots recorded. <laughs> but for anyone who follows punk, punk music, like, no effects is they, they live what they say. Like these guys are still sleeping on on like their buddies' couches, and they're in their their fifties, you know. Sure. Okay, I guess that is to say, no, no, non, completely alcohol related uh, craziness in the army. Yeah, <laughs> plenty of that. Yeah, exactly. 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 <laughs> he was about to say exactly. <laughs> there was there. I was at a, a long time ago. I haven't had a drink in, um, yikes, almost 12 years or something crazy like that. But I, I witnessed a fight where one guy said something. This other guy was like, I'm, I'm in the 82nd. And then all you saw were just hands being thrown. <laughs> and, just, and this is like literally a local bar by my house. I could walk there from here. <laughs> 
Oh. Drink and fight. That's how we do. There was a molten salt reactor in LA. I think they would get rid of old sodium by floating barrels out of the dam and shooting them. Yeah. Even at my local um, dump by my house, they still like let off shots at seagulls. It's crazy. But I know my human ended up a few junk bunks in Germany. I have um, two nieces that were born in Germany <laughs> and one that was born in uh, Japan. My brother and his wife were stationed together stupidly for a very long time. I think they were in the army. I have to ask them. They were both in the army. How's it going, Commander? <laughs> I had a Star Trek still here. Oh. I had a I had a Star Trek related question and I completely forgot uh, because I'm on the, I'm on this um, weird kick where I'm watching all of my old um, my old Star Trek VHSs that I purchased at Rasputin in Northern good old Northern California. <laughs> <laughs> still uh, which, here uh, just stretching my legs because I need my knees are crap and I needed to stand up fair enough I get like that during four hour like anything over a four hour stream I have to get up and, and stretch but I've been pacing my coffee so I'm not as um, I don't have to get up and pee as much <laughs> So back on to the spy balloon. What do you think is going to happen? Because they're not going to stop. They're not. They're they're just trying to annoy. They're. I don't see the Chinese trying to um, go to war with us. We are. We're their cash cow. Yeah. Right. Right now, if Japan and China called in their loans, they would own like Idaho, some <laughs> Wyoming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I say good riddance to those states, but um, (laughs) outside of that, um, they're they're just probably playing head games and seeing how far they can push it and testing the waters because they want Taiwan. And do you remember, like before the elections, the Saudis were promising hundred forty dollar a barrel oil and um. The Fed chairman was like, millions of jobs lost. Be scared, blah, blah, blah. So the elites want a weak, prophetic, pathetic man-child running the country. And um, I'll leap. <laughs> you know. And they want people who will try to dress like a clown balloon in Congress during the State of the Union to stir up shit. So they're just trying to stir up shit. It's, um, we are definitely on the dark side of the mirror. We are definitely on the dark side of the mirror. It's craziness. I agree. I heard Go ahead, Skiz. Um, I heard something like, like there were these balloons were also during the, uh, the I guess they detected or they they read the data from the, some of these balloons that they were have been circling around for a while, like since the, you know, I guess Trump administration. Okay, before um, I completely blame Trump, let's be real. Um, most Americans, I'm going to stand up and back up, but. Um, <laughs> Let me. I'm gonna make myself <laughs> big. I'm gonna make myself big. Most Americans are like this. Most Americans are like this, and I'm one. I literally wake up, I get out of my bed, and I do this. How many actually look up in the sky? Because <laughs> I'll tell you, like, if I saw a balloon with my um, with my telescope, I'd call NORAD. I'd call the switchboard and be like, hey, I'm a dumb American. <laughs> Here's my exact location. I'm a civilian. I see a balloon, bro. 
like do something please <laughs> i'm not kidding you i I'd, need an adult i'd send them an email <laughs> like hey bro i'll take take a picture like hey bro uh just so you, you know them. at longitude latitude you probably could i could probably uh send them a heads up um on Twitter. Most Americans wouldn't do that. Because, like, if I saw a balloon flying like that, I just assume it was some meteorological balloon and it had a legit purpose. Because I don't know who the hell put it up. I live... Um, we also have most spy tech in the air other than than any country. I agree. It's, and that's another thing. See, that's the thing. We're not rude, though. We fly, <laughs> we fly drones. We don't watch balloons. We fly actual planes without people in them over your area, and you don't see them because they're almost in orbit. <laughs> we we have robots, not balloons. <laughs> Come on, we're it civilized. Was, do you know when I when um the uh I ran in, in Iran, they downed a drone and they put it in a hangar. When I saw how huge that thing was, I said, that's an effing plane. <laughs> said, that's, a, that's a plane, dude. <laughs> yeah. One On the, one uh... of the Starsky streams, Operator Starsky was talking about how we had a, there was a billion dollar American drone that everyone knew that was there. Just flying over Ukraine, finding stuff. That's crazy. And that's another thing. Uh, oh, gosh, that reminds me of a Robin Williams uh, record called Why Is There Air? But who controls the air? You know, like no one. <laughs> Whoever has the fastest uh, jet, basically. Yeah. Whoever has the fastest jet or the best missile, um, you know, system, because there's a cat and mouse with that. Yeah. Thank you, Kilroy. That's what I was trying to get to. We are the civilized ones. And if you yeah. mess with us, we'll send thousands of Ask Obama. We'll send thousands of them. <laughs> yeah, we got predator drones and <laughs> reaper drones. And In fact, uh, up here in uh, Northern California, there's an Air Force base that uh, you, one, of, is one of the bigger surveillance drone uh, places. I think it's Beale Air Force Base. And this is another thing that drives me crazy. Um, let me tell you, if real aliens came down, somebody would at least be on Facebook live, like it live streaming everywhere. It would be everywhere. Don't let me be the first person of color that legitimately sees an alien. Don't let me. I'm going to go live instantly on my cell phone. It's going to be grainy. You're going to see all the spot, all, all the scars on my face. <laughs> it's <laughs> like it's going to be like a Blair Witch thing. <laughs> So scared. It always comes down. It does, Alibaba. It always does. It, it, it just, you know, um, I watch a lot of Mary Beard, the historian, and she always talks about ancient battles. And she says in every ancient battle, it comes down to one thing: outflanking your enemy and having more troops than the than your enemy. That that in all the ancient battles, that's literally what it was. It was strategy, but it was like, I'm going to come over here, go over there, and then overpower you from both sides. It's quite literally <laughs> what most ancient battles were. You can give them names of who the aliens should take into their country. Oh, that is true. They'd also be the world star hip hop guy making videos. Of alien. Yeah, yeah. I I posted a meme like that on Facebook a while ago of um it was a bunch of people with phones in the air and it was a meteor coming down. And it was if the world ended tomorrow. And that would be true. Like people would be like, oh, it's not going to, it's not hitting anywhere close to me. And they would have their cell phone out, not realizing it would destroy the planet. <laughs> That's another thing. Um, I ask this all the time. Like, are, do they have special bunkers? Do people not realize what nuclear winter is? There's a really good movie that um, I quote. And because I was raised by adults, it's called On the Beach. I believe Gregory Peck is the star in the movie. It's about um, nukes going off around the planet. And he's a submarine commander. 
And I'm not going to give the movie away. It's a great movie. I literally made a patch that says, we're still here, brother. Because Australia was the only safe place on Earth to go. <laughs> so in the movie, everybody was being ferried to Australia. Great movie. If you're ever bored, you should watch it. Gregory Peck, just great movie. That, that, that truly is probably, you know, how the world is going to end. And But it's not going to, it's going to be because of, not because it's, you know, one country decided to send a nuke over in combat it's gonna be a computer glitch or something stupid yeah and then pff, mutually assured destruction yeah exactly there, there goes the fucking planet exactly and then and then you know and people a lot of people what they don't realize is like okay you're on the solomons you're gonna survive for a while but uh, a nuclear uh, a giant wave of nuclear radiation is gonna rain down on you and it's not gonna dissipate it's gonna build up over time Good movie. You mean Fallout, but that's if they use cobalt bombs, I think that would do it. But if they didn't use cobalt in it, you wouldn't <laughs> wipe out everyone. Phoenix, you have me dying with this comment, right? Here. <laughs> Whenever I think of Woolstar hip hop, I think of the death of our civilization. In <laughs> in two thousand and one, um I help people. If I see someone in distress, I help people. And I gave the Heimlich maneuver to this older woman. And she kindly thanked me and cursed out everybody in the room because they watched her. And um, after she cursed them out, I yelled out, I said, you know what? 20 years from now, we're gonna have we're gonna have a million rappers and no doctors. And you're not gonna regret <laughs> it. And here we are. 20, 25 years later, here we are. People are screaming <laughs> world star hip hop on YouTube. <laughs> so my father, he told me a bunch of stories towards the end of his life that I don't think he was supposed to. And like the Russians got close way too many times. Like where I live, there's a bunch of weird islands. Like we have the Channel Islands. We have Catalina Island. Um, off the coast of Southern California and they found uh, Russian subs like within like literally in within view of Santa Monica Pier <laughs> like in 1980 you know like in like 1979 1980 you know we've come close like, quite a few times oh yeah oh yeah and uh, there are quite a few times where it came down to one person's deciding, you know what? I think this might be wrong. And rather than being, I want to be the one that launches the nuke, they're like, I don't want to be the one that ends the fucking world. So they actually double check it and they're like, oh, yeah, it was just a computer glitch or oh, it was just the sun reflecting off of a satellite or something. Yeah, you don't want Worf. No, no, it's not a good day to die. No, <laughs> I wouldn't. He would kick me off his ship. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, Captain, no, today is not a good day. <laughs> uh -uh. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. well, how about, you know, I read in a, there, I read in this book called Hatred about how when Americans, um, like when other countries go to war, they hope to die for their country. When, um, when Americans go to war, we hope that other people die for their country first. <laughs> you mean Patton in the movie Patton where it opens up? Um, mm -hmm. Some people say you're supposed to go and die for your country. No, you're supposed to make the other poor bastard die for his country. You know, right. in real life, in real life, um, Patton sounded like a combination of Elmer Fudd and Bernie Sanders. He had a really thick Boston accent, really whiny and screechy. Yeah, Bernie is everyone's 80. I will tell you, if you see Bernie Sanders, you see someone who's just like my Jewish grandfather. <laughs> I was a delegate for him for uh, a while back for his last run. There's a very famous World War II British general by the name of Montgomery. And um, they portray him like he was a giant. He was 5'3". And... He was a total a hole. He was the definition, but he was there when the Brit, when the Brits, um, you know, when the British tanks rolled in Germany. 
that was like the big F you like, no, you guys been bombing us for nine years. <laughs> We're finally here. You call, but they, but you know, he's portrayed as the man who um, ended world war two, basically. And he is the real life mighty mouse. I think it feels hard to be a Slav in America in this day and age, waiting to be proud of one's heritage, but hating all the things that's going on now. The people that own the um, dispensary that I go to are all Russian, and they have a sign when you walk in that says, we are not those Russians. I'm saying, and they're good, not, but they're good people. Like, like I know the owner. I've become friends. Um, people trip out because I'm really into hockey, and like we've become friends. He's a good guy, you know. He's a, a human being, and I think it's easy to dehumanize people. That, that's well, what, what do what? what do Americans who happen to have had family from Russia or who thought Russia was a piece of shit? and came to America have to do with what Putin is doing. Oh, and fun fact about people who say, yes, I am Russian Jew. No, no. Actually, most people who, you know, came to America before the fall of Tsarist Russia and the rise of the Soviet Union and all those little national republics that existed under its banner for a while, uh, most Jews in America who say the Russian Jews are actually either from like Latvia, um, Poland, or Belarus, or Ukraine. Hmm. I think it's insane to blame people. I don't. I I don't blame people for the past. I don't walk around saying that I hate Caucasian people or I hate uh, all Swiss people. <laughs> Because those are the, that would those be are stupid. The people who owned <laughs> my ancestors. Well, no, the my the people who owned my ancestors were Swiss. That's why my last name is Swiss. But I don't I don't like walk around with hatred or contempt because of that. You know, I can't dig them up and yell at them. You know, you could try. Well, their kids are not. <laughs> their kids are not the ones who, you know, like you ask me, do I hate Germans? Well, if you're not walking around with a swastika and trying to rekindle the four, you know, rekindle the Third Reich or the four, or whatever, it basically, if you're not actively a Nazi and you like um, beer and um, sausage, I don't really care and I don't hate you. But if you want to basically try to be Hitler, yeah, we're going to have a problem. Liz, I'm so sorry you're having a bad day. And I've I've gotten in um, arguments with people about Ike almost to the point of fist fights because I did not realize that in Russia they consider um, other people to be the liberator of World War II. In the UK, they can they have their heroes, and in America, we have Ike. <laughs> I like Ike. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, so it's all perspective of where you're from. But I'm an American, so you know what I'm gonna say. I literally have Harry S. Truman's biography with an eye shot. Like, I'm a Homer American. You know what I'm going to say. My <laughs> grandparents made me memorize. At one time, I memorized FDR's 1934 State of the Union address. One time, I had that memorized. Wow. Liz, I am, in a I'm... little... I'm sorry. No, 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 okay, it's okay, Liz. I'm sorry you have you're having a bad day. I've trust me. <laughs> like a couple days ago, I just I had the crappiest day ever. I get it. Shitloads of people do need, need do need to take a chill pill. Do you know um, pot being pot being legalized in my part of California changed the crime the demographics of crime? I'm not kidding you. You can look it up. <laughs> Like there are certain kinds that just do not happen anymore because uh, marijuana is legal and people are that much more calm. It's almost that. like if you're not driving or operating heavy equipment, it doesn't cause problems. No, 
I was just about to say, like, I wonder what the statistics are, you know, how they're dealing with the DUIs, you know, if there are DUIs out there. I'm sure there are, but, you know, as far as what the numbers are. Uh, from my personal experience, it depends on the cop and it depends on, on um, if you are so high that you cannot handle what you're doing. Like, if just as if, imagine you're in your car and you, you see someone and you suspect them of being a drunk driver and you find out it's it's because of their vape pen when you would no, no, I, I'm, I'm just giving you a hard time but like wouldn't that constitute as a dui because i don't want that br- i have had lots of i've known more than four or five people to die from from um drunk drivers so i'm heartless when it comes oh, to yeah. people who drink and drive like no i'm heartless towards it so um if you can't handle what you're doing get off the road yeah i as a kid yeah i lost you know friends that way uh, you know dui and, and stupid things like that and when i was a correctional officer yeah i would see these people come in with for duis and and dui accidents and dui fatalities and get such lenient sentences and it really bothered me and i still hold a you know like no, uh, you're, you're ruining it, someone's life. You're you're ruining not someone. You're ruining like their entire family's life. You know, oh, yeah. someone was well, imagine sitting at a stoplight and then your life's over. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, we, I, we I had, just we had I a lady no... that uh, yeah yeah we had a lady that um she, she was in minimum security and uh, you know look she she was there because she got drunk and it was like her third fourth fifth DUI or something like that killed a mother and her child and got one year county and 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 they had to go to alcohol anonymous that's crazy one year for taking two lives that's crazy yeah and they and you know what um they probably got out in like a month or two no oh, yeah oh yeah 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 at least they were minimum like, security the whole time. So they got to play freaking ping pong, watch go TV. out to work, go yeah. smoke. <laughs> it was watch TV, lots of TV. It's... <laughs> That's insane. We, you know, you know where I live, um, depending on how much money you have is, is if you're going to go to jail or not. It's sad. Absolutely. And, and going back to the weeds, like there were people who got, you know, caught with just a little too much weed that got more time than her, you know? justice system is a little, little skewed there's people in prison right now um in other states for the same thing that we take for granted you know absolutely i think about that all the time because i um still have a very heavy arizona connection with family and <clears throat> well i don't even talk to my arizona family <laughs> But I have a lot of friends that lived in Arizona. I lived in Arizona. I went to school there. And um, I wouldn't, um, if I, every time, when I go to Nevada, I have no qualms bringing anything with me or I don't even think about it because pot's legal in Nevada. When you go to Arizona, you could get hardcore time and they're waiting for you. <laughs> because they know they have old school laws. Pot's legal, but it's you have to have a card. You have to, you know, it's you, you have to have their specific paperwork. It's it's weird, like different states and their different laws, and and what we almost take for granted as oh, if it's legal here, it must be legal there. Like one time, I was uh, when uh, I um, was going out hunting up no- near the Oregon border. So our hotel was on one side of Oregon and the place that we, we hunted typically was on, on just on the other side in California because we had California licenses. And we were both in law enforcement and had concealed weapons permits and things like that, which was valid in California, Nevada, Washington. But for some reason, Oregon didn't recognize our, you know, our, our concealed weapons permit. So every time we'd happen to cross back you know it from california into oregon we'd have to make sure that our, our sidearms that were, were, had, were secured and locked and you know according to oregon's laws and it was just uh very annoying absolutely <laughs> that sounds very annoying and you couldn't pump your own gas 
they um during uh, a couple years ago they have this thing now where you can but but because people are so indoctrinated and not pumping their own gas they still have attendance i'll tell you the first time i was this uh kid wet behind the ears i um I got my first truck. It was a 1983 Ford Ranger. I drove straight to Vancouver, Canada because I wanted to do shrooms in Canada. I was a dumb kid. I remember pulling up in Oregon and almost fighting somebody because they're like, I'm like, why is this dude coming towards my car? I'm paranoid. I'm a city person. Like people just don't walk up on you for no reason. It took me a while to get used to that. I miss, yeah, I'm like, biased though. I lived in Oregon. Them, <laughs> Mark Short, um, California and Australia have very similar similar laws. It's the same here. You get like um, seven years for murder, and they'll give you more time for drug for drug use. You'll get more time if you have cocaine in your pocket. You'll get more time if you have distribution, or if you're a RICO case, they'll give you a hundred years. But if you shot somebody, they'll give you seven. <laughs> it's crazy. But criminals are going to be criminals. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with not having to pump gas, but we do now have two A laws and that are going to be enforced in too many counties because they are dumb. <clears throat> I'm not like again, I'm not um dogging it. I miss Oregon. It's just I'm nostalgic because Cal like where I live is turning into Gotham City. I just I just remembered who uh, an interesting fact about Oregon it was we they, they didn't recognize our concealed weapons permit yet you could literally walk into you know as soon as you got to Oregon and walk into the nearest big five and 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 buy with cash an, an assault rifle you know extended <laughs> magazines and as much ammo as you want and probably pick up your antidepressant prescription and and, and walk out in, in the same day and it's it's just so weird. Do you know what's funny? Um, in Nevada, they have the, one of the largest gun stores in America. And when you walk in, they will tell you to your face. We will sell you anything unless you have a California ID. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like that in uh, Montana as well. Where else have I been where they're like, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> you're from a nanny state you we we don't want you we don't want your kind around here they have made like laws your kind. <laughs> and, and i wasn't even offended because um i know someone who's a police officer and had the same problem but that person knowing them they shouldn't um have an ar-15 <laughs> they should not have an ar-15 knowing this person Commander, you still there? Oh yeah. If you see that, if you see it moving, that's actually motion tracking. Oh okay. So do you I was think, just like um, listening. Do you think anyone should own an AR-15 for controversy's sake? I love this conversation. <laughs> um, soldiers, and that's not really them owning it; they're just using it. Because, you know, <clears throat> Bambi's not coming at you, and um, that particular weapon is designed to do one thing, kill people and kill them fast, versus, um, you know, hunting weapons or even M1 Garands, which are actually a work of art. Many 14s are also works of art as far as machining goes. So, I mean, there are some guns which aren't, even though they were, like, used in war, they're not as efficient as, um, you know, AK-47s or AR-13s or but even M-16s. Some, but even something like a Ruger 1022, that's something that's, like, fun to take um, to the range, you know? It's just, a, it, that's a um, fun gun. And it's semi, depending on how you want to shoot it, you know. Do I'm you not going to deny that shooting guns is fun. I'm just like, can you do about the automatic? I mean, the um, the NRA used to poo-poo the Tommy gun and automatic weapons mm -hmm. because those were 
the sloppy weapons. They were originally the NRA came into existence from to promote excellence in marksmanship. And then it started promoting conspiracy theories and taking cash from Russia. <laughs> yeah. At least, at least for the most part, for the most part these days, assault rifles are limited to semi-automatic. Yeah. But unfortunately, the, you know, it's relatively easy to modify them. You know, oh, it's illegal to make bump stocks. Yeah, that doesn't stop them from making bump stocks. I was going to say, and I'm not teaching anyone anything they don't know, but you could still order the Archangel kit on Amazon. Come on. Like, exactly. <laughs> I had a neighbor who knew I had a machine shop in my garage, and he had the gall to bring me blueprints for an M23, M203 grenade launcher to attach to his... I and carried one I of those. Said, and I said, I'm not <laughs> going to jail for you. <laughs> Real 40 millimeter grenade launcher. Fuck off. Really, really quickly. Um, Gilroy, same, same, and same. And I agree with you. Like, is the it's so like I live in an area where there's a very large population of LGBTQIA plus people, and it is known that if you run up on that side of town, you will get turned into Swiss cheese. It is just, it is known. So I don't know how it is anywhere else in the country, but if you are LGBTQIA plus, get a get a firearm if you live in America. <laughs> a synagogue that I used to go to, um, I the uh, the attendant was armed, and then they had some serious equipment in the um, I won't say where. Um, <laughs> That was actually owned by the temple after the Tree of Life synagogue, and we had a cop parked out front. So if you wanted to start some shit, we would send you to back to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they... Like, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I have this vision of the average American owning a firearm, but I was raised by a hillbilly. And, you know, somebody who was um, born in, in the late 30s, and my my mom is an old school American, so she has full um, paperwork. Don't break into her house. Don't, don't come uninvited. You know? <laughs> but I don't uh, have any guns at my house when I lived in me. Virginia. No guns because we have tempers and post traumatic stress disorder. And I know full well that if I had a gun, at times I'd be dead. And or my brother would have gone out and killed people of whom he disagrees with. So there's I, I, that whole thing where if you shouldn't have a gun, you should be able to say, no, I shouldn't have one. I agree with you. I'm, and, and I'm not saying um, everybody should. I'm not saying everybody should have a firearm. I'm, I'm just saying, like, um, because I grew up with the American old school propaganda, I feel that you, you have you should have the right to defend yourself. I don't deny that. And and, and I'm talking in and, and not even like, let's take a gun out of the equation. Like uh, if a crowd of people are coming at me, I'm going to grab a brick. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to jump in a tree and come down with a flying kick or something. I don't know. Like, like elbow dropping. You have, the right, you have the right to defend yourself, but I, I'm a, a wiry, jumpy person. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there's a right to defend yourself when you have reasonable, you know, like in Florida, they created a stand your ground law that relied on feelings, feelings, <laughs> not on facts. And there was this young man who walked through someone's yard in Miramar near Miramar High School and... Um, he basically got shot by a dude named Zimmerman, armed only with a Slurpee and a bag of Skittles, as Zimmerman chased the unarmed uh, young man down several blocks. Because um, um, I also remember Denise Glasser talking about, you feel threatened. Well, let's, let's imagine how that's going <laughs> to hang out work out when a blood and a crip inside Sawgrass Mills malls feel threatened by each other. Exactly. 
Um, yeah. I've had That's, to... Hmm. I really quickly, I've had to say the same thing to my son, Mark Short, <laughs> because I own uh, quite a few drill presses and all kinds of fancy and fun stuff. Um, you really have to, when anyone asks you to make a gun, you have to be like, no. And well, why do you need me to make you one in the first place? You know, but that is that in America, they will find you. <laughs> they will, they will track you down. Yeah. Like if, if my neighbor, if I made my neighbor the M203 that he wanted, and then he did something horribly legal with it, or he just got caught with it, they'd be like, where did you get this? There's no serial numbers or anything on it. He's like, my neighbor made it for me. And then I'd wind up in prison. Oh, big time in here nowadays, because of buzz buzzwords like fentanyl, ghost gun, and anything else you could think of, there are certain bu uh, buzzwords. You go to jail. That that is a on the monopoly. That is straight to jail. You go straight to jail on the monopoly card. If you get caught with a ghost um, firearm or anything that ha that does not have serial arms, you are instantly detained. We don't even have laws against it, but you will be instantly detained because they don't even know what to do anymore. Are there laws where you're not allowed to manufacture your own firearm? Yes, yes, oh, you yeah. need to oh, be yeah. licensed. You need to have okay, heavy go. license. I I actually checked into it uh, because it's like good money if you're a gunsmith and you can do it on the side. It was when I looked into it, it was something like five thousand dollars a year and um, extensive background checks and a lot of paperwork. That's what I, uh, I I figured. I figured, but the way people act nowadays, they act like laws don't exist, so I don't even know anymore. <laughs> now, <laughs> you, there are certain components that you can make. I was just about to ask that. <laughs> um, but basically, almost nothing to do with um, a receiver or a barrel. Yeah. Isn't the lower receiver, like, the actual, like, tracked portion of most firearms? Thank you. I was about to go off because the second that law went into effect... All of a sudden, everybody with machine shop had new friends. And people asking them dumb questions. Gilroy, I, I grew um, up very hillbilly. I, I call it 1980s. It's just old school America, you know, where like I, I was trying to explain to my son when I was a kid. Um, I had a squirrel, which was a single shot 22. And my father and I... Um, freaking op style we would literally walk over the freeway turn our backs to the freeway and shoot at oak trees this is like the early 80s you go to jail now <laughs> they would throw you under the jail everyone who's nuts who's not nuts or a criminal should be allowed to have a gun i agree but i i you know again i try to take a step back because i i am an american and i know that the world is bigger than america and so because of that, I grew up with the American propaganda where I feel you have the right to defend yourself. If you want a gun, just buy it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I told them. Go get a license. Yeah, exactly. If you don't have a license, like, what are you doing? You know, I, 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 I have questions. If someone, because I, I own a machine shop, if you ask me, if you ask me stupid questions, I'm going to ask you even more stupid questions. We can manufacture firearms in Australia. Just need to register it before you make it. Wow. Australia can... also has a lot of ranches and a lot of people who live out in the boonies. And, you know, you're also an island unto yourself. So it's a different country, literally a different country. And you don't have the kind of violence that we have here anyway. I watched a um documentary a documentary about I about cow you know I am I um have a uh, a cowboy thing <laughs> you can take that any way you want to also <laughs> but um because I'm a horse person you know I love watching cowboys around the world and I watched these people I don't know if they were in New Zealand I think they were on like this weird island between New Zealand and Australia but they just had guns to keep um, the animals, all the marmots and animals away from their cattle. They were literally cowboys, but they needed firearms for predators, you know. And in Australia, <laughs> you have all the cockatoos 
and all the parrots who love to eat all of the crops and they're numerous. And you, you think parakeets are cute? In Australia, they're a nuisance. People <laughs> kill them and hate them and hire exterminators to get rid of parakeets. Don't do parakeets don't they live for a hundred years? No, parakeets don't, but there are some parrots that yes, do. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <coughs> I have a neighbor who recently lost a parrot. And it's flying around the neighborhood. And I'm like, well, it, it, that thing's going to outlive us all anyways. Lost his parrot. Like, literally lost it. Like, oh, there it goes. Like, I was like, oh, it, it died. But no, it's... Where'd it go? I, thought, I thought they were crazy until I saw it in the tree. Because it's so colorful, it sticks out, and everything is so green or brown around here. Like, I was like, okay, they're not crazy. They're not on drugs. <laughs> now, <I'm> just... as... <laughs> This is like 2014, 2015 law, so it might have changed. Um, you can make your own muzzle loading black powder weapons. They just can't be repeaters. Where's my Enfield? Do you know um, black powder is legal? I like my Confederate Colt, I can walk around with that thing. I'd get stopped, though, big time. If I was up north, people would be like, hey, that's a really cool gun. And um, Phoenix, I actually used to put that clip of, I can't quit you in a lot of my sewing machine uh, videos. But then I started getting really weird uh, DMs. <laughs> and not even yeah. like that. Not even like the, hey, this was like, guy, did you like, stop sending me D-pics, get out of here. You're, how old are you? <laughs> and, and if you know a little bit about metallurgy and you can get a hold of some scrap steel from before World War II and you're a good machinist and you have the right prints, you could make certain weapons which are... Um, Earlier than like 18 um, something or other. Um, and if you could, if you were good enough, you could pass it off as a gun that is so old that it no longer required, you know, you know it's not under federal jurisdiction. Um, they, um, but, the, 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 oh, sorry, go ahead. But um, I wouldn't recommend it. And the reason why I said, said you'd probably need steel from before then, because if they really wanted to get you, all steel has trace amounts of um, fallout in it that was made after. So, but that's oh. about the only way I could see you getting around the federal laws. I'm not <laughs> suggesting you do it, and I never did it, but... <laughs> Quite the then you have to find really old wood too. <laughs> I know Phoenix, your um, your text not letting you join for some reason, but quite honestly, I um, yesterday with YouTube, I I had a breakdown. It wouldn't let me upload my video, and I'm like, is is my channel banned? Am I shadow banned? <laughs> Which, oh, I had a total meltdown. I was up until four o'clock in the morning trying to upload the video. It would not upload, or it would only upload six minutes of it. And then I'm like, oh, it's my computer. It wasn't my computer. It was YouTube. There's a ton of glitches going on right now. All these countries need to get their stuff together. I don't care if you guys want to all kill each other. We need to communicate and ignore you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we just want our lives to go on. This is why the leaders of certain countries should just get in a cage and fight each other. <laughs> like, if mm. you have a problem, when Joe Biden can pick a, um, a representative. Right. I, I think that we should just get the biggest, baddest of each country, right? He was just go all like wwf style or something that's how they used to uh, well i guess i well brad pitt showed me in um what movie was that troy that's how they used to do it <laughs> so i have a confederate cult and youtube this is legal so do not uh, take me down but this is an actual real confederate cult and it's been passed down through my family and it ended up in my hands. Do you know what's so funny? 
this thing literally um, was was fought in a war, and it was fired a million times because my father was obsessed with black powder uh, weapons. The metal is so worn down that it's like it's soft metal. <laughs> <laughs> Bang! <laughs> now this this thing is. Um, you can even see with the octagon barrel and everything. That's cool. <laughs> it might, it's um, more of a movie prop at, at this point, but this gun is a couple, you know, it's hundred something years old. My dad would uh, got into the whole uh, fake Western uh, thing for a while. They'd have like parades and the, you know, they bang, 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 all shoot, you know, shoot, shooting blanks at each other and all that. And, uh, I guess one year, some some guy uh, he decided he was gonna load his own blanks and whatever, and then he sh pointed and shot at my dad's face, and you know he, uh, he, oh, he took a wow. piece of wadding to the face, and uh, I remember getting the phone call from like his 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 wife at the time, he, and all I remember is she was like, "Your dad was just shot in the face." Oh my <laughs> god! Like, what? What the? Yeah. <laughs> That is the that is the sentence you do not want to hear. <laughs> that is the, I when I was younger, we used to go off with black powder, like, but you just can't play like that anymore. We would shoot black powder in my neighborhood. I actually have a ton of black powder, but I take it out in the middle of nowhere. That's why my son's like, I want to live with my dad. <laughs> dad's fun he makes explosions and doesn't go to jail the fire department doesn't show up <laughs> fun fun thing about the what i was thinking when you were showing off that gun the tolerances on the chamber and everything outside of the diameter of the barrel are actually a lot looser than you would think if before i learned about it if i had designed a gun I would have designed the tolerances so tight that either the cartridges would not load or it would have blown up. <laughs> I guess, do, do they have to like make the tolerances so shaky? Or, Plus or, or minus reasons? And... Um, the production of the um, cartridges, they're not exact. The cartridges usually aren't the same length or the oh. same diameters because they're sheet metal we um we have a range out in the middle of nowhere phoenix that we could go to but ever since um the 07 fire people really don't fire firearms out there anymore because um we saw oh the king scored again Good, the sabers killed us six nothing last time. But anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> but regardless, <laughs> um, ever since the 07 fire, it's kind of traumatized everybody. So we go up there and fire black powder. It's a weird community of like people that ride horses because we have a bunch of properties that are a butt to each other. It's um, it's kind of it's like its own little world up there. But um, I'm the same guy that used to give safety meetings. And on the same day that I was yelling at somebody about a safety meeting, I backed into um, an oak tree <laughs> and destroyed a truck. <laughs> and I'll never forget this this uh, woman, Dorothy, who was like, I think I have a hillbilly picture of, here, of her in here, too, holding a shotgun because we're hillbillies. But she was like my second mom. And she grabbed me and she was like, if you were anybody else, we would drug test you and fire you. Get out of my face. <laughs> See, that's in even um, nepotism has its uh, back backlashes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're a you're a Sabres fan. Yikes. <laughs> you know, it's really funny uh, when I I was in uh, Johnny B's. I was in Johnny B's bar. In I think it's not Eugene Medford in Medford, Oregon, and I was wearing um, a Kings sweater, and someone walked up to me and was like, "You're cool, but I hate the Kings." And then I walked down the street, and, and a car drove by, and they're like, "The Kings suck," <laughs> and that's when I realized that people hate my hockey team. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, that's awesome! I love sports rivalries. I absolutely love it. 
So speaking of sports, how are you feeling about the Super Bowl, huh? No, I don't do group sports usually, but I know the same. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm a huge hockey fan. I um, <clears throat> I try not to put morality behind things, but I was like, I hope Mahomes loses. I but but see, like we're all like moral Mary nowadays because we have the ability to be up in each other's business. We judge somebody, and Mahomes is a home wrecker. He was he was doing the woman he was working with. That person was married. I would be mad if my wife was um, doing a, a, a quarterback. You know, it hurts more <laughs> when they're it hurts more when they're famous. It hurts more. Fair. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I hope he loses. But you know, um, uh, during uh, yesterday during Phoenix Electra's uh, stream, actually, I'm so glad that she was streaming because I had my headphones on. My uncle was trying to get in a political conversation. He was a um, police officer for over 40 years. So you know how that conversation is going to go. Um, my other my other uncle, every time I talk to him, he's like, how do you feel about that non-binary thing? How do you feel? <laughs> and I'm like, get the in front of my face like like because i'm like i'm the encyclopedia to them and i'm glad they feel comfortable enough to come to me and ask me these questions but like um we have a family tradition where we get every finger food you could possibly think of during the super bowl so i'm there for the food <laughs> pot stickers and mozzarella sticks man Ooh. count me in you know, <laughs> you know, we had Wong Tons and all like it's a family tradition to gorge on the Super Bowl. <laughs> no way, no way you saved me from my like I come from a hardcore conservative Catholic family. <laughs> and the one thing that burns them the most, the most. They legitimately have been asking me this for over 20 years. They're like, so you don't go to church? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do on Sundays? <laughs> well, I stream with this thing called Godless Sewing, right? Like <laughs> No, I and you know, there uh, I know at least one or two people in my family are watching. I blocked <laughs> I blocked my sister from commenting because she had said some extremely homophobic things. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> She's angry and she, my my sister's angry. My, we <laughs> we have a hardcore rivalry. Hardcore. <laughs> but like, no, no, your stream was awesome. But the food was amazing. I got to ignore my family. <laughs> and my my uncle who handed a business to my heroin addict cousin, and I only say that out of pure jealousy, because I wish someone would hand me a business. But he always asked me, like, oh, how is your vest and everything going? And I'm always like, great. I sold six sewing machines. I made a million dollars. I bought a Ferrari yesterday. I'm doing great. I lied my arse off to him. <laughs> I lied I'm also a NASA astronaut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like, bro, like, you, like, I'm doing good. You know, I'm not, I'm not um, Ferrari level or anything, but I'm, I'm a high pay my own bills you'll never see a gofundme for me and you know what i'm saying like i'm all right but like he literally handed my cousin the business so he's asking like he's like hey your loser cousin owns six trucks and uh and all this like you gave it to him <laughs> and i'm jealous <laughs> but i'm mad enough to admit it like I wish, scraps. I wish my father like you know and my father did but like my family is about um, helping people. So the business I work for, we help. We actually like, you know, help people like actual real people, you know, we're not and we're not extorting them. So there's a difference. It sucks. Being honest, you, you'll die poor. <laughs> I'm serious. Like the more honest you are, like it's. Oh. The taxes of being a small business person sucks. We can have a flat tax. And see, that's the thing. Like, being a small business owner in America, like, like, you know, he used to always be like, why did that guy buy a nice car? And all? Because that's the only thing he's going to have to show for his business <laughs> is that nice car he purchased, you know? Look at your hillbilly relative who hoards sewing machines. <laughs> 
Oh, they, do you know what's really funny? Like, because I come from such a hardcore conservative family, they're just like, they're like, William is, uh, William must have had a head injury or something. <laughs> <laughs> they think I've lost my dad mind. But my father was an extremely eccentric person. And so they're, they always tell me like, oh, you're just like your dad. <laughs> but that, that's just like, oh, they're just saying like, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> Like, did dad walk around in Shatner's a cape and a cowboy hat? Like, yes, fair, yes, yes. Apple didn't fall far from the tree. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, as a matter of fact, um, he embarrassed the hell out of my sister. And I'll never forget every time we would see another black cowboy, my dad would run up to him and be like, Here, I need to help you embarrass my daughter. Come here, come here. He didn't give a F. My, they, I was raised by really outgoing old school people. Like when my father, if I, I looked this up in 1939, the population of the earth was 2 billion. So when my, in my, when my father was born, cause he talked about all these opportunities and all these things that he did, there were no people on earth. <laughs> How many people are in India right now? How many people are just in Hong Kong right now? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> It's called a metric fuck ton. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I love um, bringing up that statistic. So from 1940, in 1940, there were 2 billion people on the planet. And here it is, what, 2023? And how many people? We're, are we at seven? Almost eight. Yeah, wow. Eight, yeah. <laughs> so we quadrupled in the last, what, 60, 70, 80 years? Do you so to play devil's advocate? Do you blame uh, penicillin? I, I I always say penicillin and like modern medicine is a reason that we have <laughs> we're overpopulated. I blame refrigeration and sanitation and vaccines yeah. and science <laughs> for our overpopulation. If we listen to the flat earthers or the <laughs> QAnons and we got rid of all of that, then the prophecies in the book of Revelation would come to pass, and then their shitheads would be happy because um, <laughs> basically two-thirds of the earth would be fucking dead. Yeah, that's what they... That's, <laughs> I agree <laughs> with you. Uh, Gilroy, I agree with you as well. Um, I love looking at old-timey photos or on Twitter when they have like the um, the reels from the early 1900s. I love watching those because I love thinking about like the earth was literally less populated, not like now. And, and you know, what's funny. Um, perspective is a funny thing. I live in a place where documented there's 10 million people just in my County undocumented. There's, you could probably add another five or seven on top of that. Okay. It doesn't feel like that. I, I can go a whole day without seeing a person. I could go north and not see a person. You There's know? plenty of space on this on this planet for, for people. It's just a matter of you know, resource allocation, I guess. That's true. That's true. I agree with you. India has never near enough to one person per acre. I don't know how they feed themselves. I agree. I've seen a, I watch again. I've watched a lot of horror stuff, like a, a lot of like <clears throat> crazy stuff on um, YouTube. And I follow um, a few YouTubers in India. And I want to say hello to anyone who's watching me from India, because apparently um, that's my second largest demographic. <laughs> I recently really? went through. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I know why. That's that's um, my second largest demographic, next to Americans, even more than people from the UK. And I have quite a few uh, friends from the UK that I uh, follow, and they follow me back. Interesting. <laughs> but I, I think I think about that all the time. I think about that. I had a very, very good friend who moved to Haifa in Israel, and when him and his wife came and visited me at my house, they 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 were hippies. They were real life hippies. And they lived in India for a while. And when they came back, they were in my backyard sitting on my grass. And, and, and I was like, what are you hippies doing? They're like, I don't think you understand. We haven't like sat alone, you know, for, for like two or three years. <laughs> 
And, but I didn't even understand. It didn't even register in my brain because I go in my backyard and sit in peace all the time. It's it's heaven in my backyard, you know, not like the fictional heaven, just like, you know, oh, I'm just content. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yes. Um, there's a ton of people who so I follow people back. Like if YouTube tells me oh, like, oh, someone so follows you. I'm I'm nosy. I'm like, oh, I want to see who this person is. Even if I don't speak the same language as you do, I will follow you back. <laughs> so there's quite a few people i learned how to use um a few juki sewing machines just by watching people speaking um, i believe in farsi i could be wrong or hindi at this point i i do you know i do not speak the language i don't even want to say something to show how much of an a sheltered american i am <laughs> can't tell what language it is necessarily true yeah, and because I speak Spanish fluently, everything turns into Spanish. But I, I speak um, more what is considered like, um, I would say Mexican Spanish. I do not speak Castilian. Um, I do not speak Portuguese. Up oh, the king scored again. Good. Rack the score up. Oh, they scored again. Oh, it's four nothing. I speak, I speak um, literally Mexican Spanish because I grew up next to Mexico with grandparents who were born there and spoke Spanish. <laughs> I rarely talk about it because um, having another language is a weapon. It's an absolute weapon. When people do not know that you speak another language, um... They'll try talking smack behind your back. And if you happen to know it, you can oh, pretty yeah. much um, <laughs> let that. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You can pretty much um, either let them know then that you know what they're talking about, or you can basically use it against them later. Exactly. Yeah, I'll try wave again. <laughs> Damn, I was muted. Yeah, yeah, I'll message you, Phoenix. <laughs> last time I heard was still averaging nine kids, but that many that may have changed. I believe. Um, I don't. I, I don't want. I um. I watch news from around the world, and um. I believe Wyon W I O N is in India, but they announced that, that there's more people in India than in China. I don't know if that's true. It's not. They're running neck and neck, but it's not. But their at some point, they will be because China is having a lot of old folks, not enough young folks, and it's becoming a crisis. That's crazy. That's absolutely. I get to watch sewing machines from all over the world. I do too. And that's why, um, like, I won't buy a Juki because it's a slave brand and brother too. It really made me want to cry. There were some, because um, I hunt for certain things. And, like, I watched this one video where they were bust. They were basically doing a bust on a slave shop. It wasn't even a sweatshop. They were slaves. These people were, like, literally held captive. And they walked in and all the machines were brother. <laughs> And you could clearly say that it said, and they were clean, brand new. You had to order these things from the manufacturer, you know, and I'm not saying that brothers like they don't care if your check clears, they don't care, but they're pro slave. They're in sweat, like brother and Juki are in sweatshops. Do you know what though? Like we talk, we talk trash about people with big families. I come from a family of nine, you know? Like Americans have big families. I come from a, a Mormon town. It's it's rare if you don't have a if you don't have a bunch of brothers and sisters where I'm from. <laughs> Almost all my relatives are. I have like there's only let's see my brother and my cousin and myself three. Um, well, that we are in contact with other than me of. Um, 
that entire generation. So it went from like more than 10 to, um, well, shit, I don't know. But we don't keep in contact with certain parts of the family because well, they turned into shitheads. So I don't know how many are left. Same with my family. Money money is a funny thing and it makes people hate each other. When certain family members died, like weird factions and, and like loyalties sprang up. It's the strangest thing. Human nature is is so weird. It, it's still mind boggling to me. And these are literally people I've known my entire life. You know? Money makes people insane. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially when they or or like um my dad had a lot of stuff and when he passed away people are like oh but what about the value of this and this and, and i was shocked of how many people were praising him when he had it and then wanted to sell it the second he passed away you know <clears throat> the money or the thought of getting money really corrupts people i have a relative um she married one of the co-founders of Intel. And even though she had all the money in the world, when my mom got injured, she suggested a lawyer who took my mom for a ride as far as the settlement goes. And um, her father, she disowned them until... Um, Aunt Leia died, and then she had to take care of her father, and then her father was outside um, uh, the Occupy, outside of Wall Street with a bullhorn talking about what a shit his son-in-law is and what the money did to his daughter, and um, they haven't been inside the country since. <laughs> and the last time we heard from them, they were like, um, it's so cold in Italy. I want to move to Switzerland. And you know what that was code for, right? Pope Francis had just become Pope, and he was telling the Italian authorities to get rid of the tax havens. It's literally shorts and short sleeves on the Italian side and snow on the ground in Switzerland and they wanted to move to Switzerland. And that's the last time we heard from them. Money yeah. is, um, is the worst, is the worst. My um, brother and I hate each other over uh, $3,000. I will never speak to my brother again because he, <laughs> Over three thousand, and that and that's cheap because he like he raised me in a way, and now we hate each other. <laughs> Money oh, is three awful. grand. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can't be in the same room because I'll I'll leap over a chair WWF style, dude. <laughs> he's a fuck, and he's 14, 15 years older than I am, and we hate each other. Yeah, money is awful. Quite honestly, I say this all the time. Um, my ex-wife was the only other experience where I was around someone's family all the time. I'd, ex I'd had ex-girlfriends where I had lived with my ex-girlfriend, but I'd never really been around their entire family. My ex-wife's family didn't have much money, but they love each other. They came together in every holiday. They helped each other out. If there was, if there was a, any event, the entire family showed up if they could. And they, it showed me like, they had more than money. In my family, it's the polar opposite, you know? So money's awful. Money. And I'm not saying every family, like, uh, you know, it just um, is united in poverty. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, like, money is awful. It's just. And that's why, like, all the time people will say, like, oh, you don't look like all those things you say. Like, man, I learned from my dad. Like, live like a hillbilly and you'll, you'll have bunch, a bunch of money to do whatever you want flossing like i don't know when i see people like in my neighborhood I'll, I'll take perfect example everyone around here has decent cars i have one yuppie car but there's a man who drives a ferrari a real one i would be scared that's almost like <laughs> the property value of some people's houses <laughs> and he's if not really I 
Go ahead. Sorry. No, finish what you're going to say. He's he just basically he's not living within his means because I live in a very um, middle class neighborhood and it's not for it's not Ferrari money around here. <laughs> it is in a way, but California, like like um, recently someone told me you basically have to be a millionaire to own a house in California nowadays. Yeah, South Florida, when I left South Florida, it was the land of the half million dollar shack and the railroad track in the <laughs> hood. Um, the trailer park where I moved out of, there were trailers and it wasn't the best one. It wasn't the worst one. My grandparents always lost money when they bought a house. So they didn't think that it was wise to buy a house. And that's why we were living in the trailer park. Um, but anyway, there were trailers selling for $400,000. That was on top of a $750 a month lot rental. I mean. That's crazy. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. That That's California prices. Um, Alibaba. Um, I had a neighbor who um, owned a house at the end of the block. And he was an older man. His name was Gunter. He passed away. He sold all the rights to this one guy. They opened the garage. He had a um, Stingray in his garage. He had vintage Harleys. He had vintage. He had, he had vintage Indian motorcycles. My neighbor, who was a cop, was like, "Man, if I'd known that, I would have robbed that place." I will never forget when he said that. I looked at him like, you sh "I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm watching you, bro." Oh, yeah. I wouldn't drive it either. That's so funny. But, like, I had the money to buy a Ferrari. Sounds I would buy a house outright and get a job that was not so stressful or didn't take up all of my time. And then I would go back to school or look to start a family or do something positive rather than just buy a car that's going to be garbage in five years. It's really funny you'd say that. Um, my son asked me the other day, um, what would I do if I, if I won the lottery? And I told him the truth. I would buy, um, you know, the stereotypical million, millionaire house, and then I'd put everything in the bank, and I would go work at McDonald's or Burger King, or, to, or I would go become a janitor, or, you know what I'm saying? Like... I would, um, I don't know if I, if I, I, I wouldn't give my money away, but like, I wouldn't, uh, I don't know. I inherited a bunch of stuff and I just ended up working 10 times harder when people inherit most stuff. They, I have a cousin who inherited, um, a house. He inherited all this stuff in Arizona and he hasn't worked in two years. <laughs> Be nice. Oh, I'm I'm mad at him too. I'm not talking to him either. <laughs> I got some jealousy issues here. No, like you know what my uh, my aunts and uncles came from World War II Depression era. We have we came we had old parents, and like if my my cousin um, who got handed a business, he's different because he cleaned up. I'm proud of him. I I wish him nothing. Like for all the shit I talk, I wish him well. I, I'm just talking trash, you know, but my other cousin, like he's a punk, like he, he was given the entire um, nest egg of his, um, <laughs> of his mother and he can't stop posting all the cruises he's going on. And my mom, my mom, you know, it's 2023. My mom just figured out Facebook and my mom's like, do you have an Instagram? I'm like, why? She's like, show me your Instagram. And she went on my cousin's Instagram and he's taking cruises around the world on my aunt's, on, you know, and this guy was a wannabe electrician. I'm not telling any secrets that anyone doesn't know. <laughs> so it takes me off. Like where I'm from, you take care of your family, you know, and then you have the spoils of war, you know, but you take care of your family. He hasn't even had a ceremony, a ceremony for my aunt and she died over a year ago. So it's well, just, that's it's, rotten. That's right? what I'm saying. Like, like uh, when my father passed away, we had a funeral so huge. I grew. I um, finally walked back in the church that I grew up in. I had never seen the church. I've never seen the church filled. There was over 400 people there. 
you know, like, but we made sure we had a ceremony and everybody like had their say, you know, we had a large event where everybody could tell stories. You know what I'm saying? We did what was right. You honor your ends. You honor the people that come before you, you know? And so, um, yeah, Indian motorcycles, um, is uh, that's the problem see here's an, another problem <laughs> indian motorcycles are the the name is definitely cultural appropriation but they're a superior motorcycle to harley harley's um you have to be a motorcycle mechanic to own a harley you have to or the harley will teach you how to be a motorcycle mechanic because it's or so you'll sad. pay through the nose to a real <laughs> motorcycle mechanic and then you'll have to sell the harley exactly it's so sad um on the weekends um when i when i do my thrift store adventures isaiah and i play a game called spot the harley and it's always the weekend warriors on the side of the road on their cell phone because their harley broke down and they don't know how to fix it <laughs> And I'm covering my face because, again, I was raised old school. Like, when my truck breaks down, I know what's wrong with it. You know? I could literally break down on the highway and fix it right then and there and keep going. I can't do that with my electric vehicle. <laughs> like, uh, oh. tow me. Oh, if my Ford Flex breaks down, I'm going to park it and take everything of value out and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I own a Ford Flex in the entire, if you open the hood, it's nothing but covered. Um, it's just, it's just computers. It's nothing. And when they have the computer chip shortage, let me tell you, um, my Ford representative was calling me and like, Hey, do you want to sell that vehicle? We'll give you an insane price for it. <laughs> I miss those days. <laughs> we may, Need to do a baby lock fix if that's because she's my Harley. I could walk you through um, a baby lock fix. I could. They're not. It's um, 99% of troubleshooting with um, sewing machines is when you take it apart, you figure it out instantly. Because once you take all the clothes off of the sewing machine, you'll see, oh, it's clogged here. Or, oh, this isn't working, you know. Once you get the casing off, you could um, figure it out. My father never had a funeral, but he didn't want one. Most of it would have just been people coming to make sure he was really dead if he, if he did. I can tell you about a relative who we... Purpose. We accidentally disrespected her after she died, but she deserved it. And then we purposefully just um, uh, landed the nail in the coffin. This was a racist Roman Catholic cousin of my dad who wound up um, going into a nursing home and dying. We were the closest thing to family she had in the area. So what happened was the nursing home calls my mom and says, um, where do you want us to take her? And she was such a honey, they sent her to a Jewish funeral home. So we got there and the guy was saying, so what movement is the deceased with? Reform, Roman Catholic, well, Reform, Orthodox, conservative, and we said Roman Catholic. So we eventually lied to him and um, said, well, she converted and we stuck her in a reformed Jewish cemetery. <laughs> That's the best thing to do to hate filled people. <laughs> Love it. Love it. I'm, you know, you know, what's really funny. Um, on my mother's side, I, my grandfather was not a racist man at all. He loved my father. They were like best friends. They told lies for each other. <laughs> they were like best friends. But my uncle, I always get the vibe from him that if we weren't related, he would like spit on me. <laughs> He's one of those um, self-hating people. He's Hispanic, but because he's white, he won't tell people he's Mexican. <laughs> 
<laughs> because in America, being uh, the word Mexican is a dirty word. Me, like to me, I, I live there. It's a beautiful place, man. If you're, I, I'm not kidding y'all. I never forget. I'm, I'm um, sitting at a cafe, cafe, smoking a cigarette, and an effing toucan came and like sat down at a tree next to me. You know, Mexico is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Nice. You know. Yeah, people just uh, immediately associate Mexico with like you know the border towns and and even you know not all border towns are necessarily you know Tijuana. You know? No, Tijuana is the old wild wild west. Like, don't get <laughs> don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, I think back and I shiver if my son was ever in these situations. But I'll never forget a man. I was 19 years old by myself in a bar on Revolution Boulevard. And a man walks into a bar and he's like, hey, anyone know how to calibrate guns? And my dumb arse, I'm like, what you got? It two o'clock in the morning in a back alley and TJ were letting off shots and the cops never showed up. <laughs> this was 20 something years ago. If my son was in that situation, I would literally like be in the in the corner in the fetal position, you know, but <laughs> But because I was trained, I was a stupid kid. Like, oh, I know how to. I'm an idiot. I'll show you. <laughs> Fun times. Fun times. You know what? Um, I'm biased towards older cars because um, because of the fact that that fact that I can fix it. I'm uh, I um, I want a, um, what I consider a European Land Cruiser. I have a question, Mark. Um, is your steering wheel on the right or left side in Australia? <laughs> they just That's put a... it in the middle. Um... <laughs> they should. They should. <laughs> I absolutely love my uh, my 88. It's more of a curiosity because Land Cruisers, those old school cars much like i always repeat myself about sewing machines they were made to last they were like okay we're gonna build this because it's gonna last forever that's why um all my pre-world war um one and world war ii sewing machines are still around you know they survived even being thrown on the scrap heap <laughs> the, the, the engineering on and so much you know stuff back in the day is really what you know made when, when people say you know buy american it was quality that's when it was quality they over engineered everything and yeah. it was it was quality exactly like even my um 88 ford truck most of the parts on it besides the stuff that i replaced to make it a monster truck are the original parts like it's still the original um block I, I replaced the, um, I made the, the um, radiator aluminum, but that's just because I like to go fast. But the rest of it is, most of it's the original parts, you know, because they were made to last, even back then. Nowadays, imagine getting, a, getting in a car accident and being able to drive your car after. Some poor kid in, in an Eclipse, um, Decided to end his car's career on my truck. <laughs> and all I did was literally come home, tell a story like an like, uh, old man. <laughs> and I pulled that thing out. I have a Bondo dent puller. It's it's just pla it's like a it's just plastic with a giant suction cup it's made by Bondo. Cup, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I put my foot against the thing and pop that thing right out, you know. You know, it's so sad that poor kid didn't have a license. He ended up getting his license taken away because I have insurance. And so my insurance company was like, oh, no, we're putting this kid. We're we're, we're going to put this kid to the fire. <laughs> One of the reasons why the older cars have a lot more durability is actually because um, crumple zones equal safety and they prioritize safety today versus um, being able to push a car over a cliff. There's some videos of them doing that to some Model Ts and showing off how well they did. Well, the, in, the passengers would be inversely, would come out inversely proportional to that. In other words, um, 
the you know they come apart because um it just um absorbs the energy better exactly it's all about the you physics know and, yeah. you know what's funny um kilroy is a hundred percent correct because when i was in high school um I got in a car accident in a Volvo, and because Volvos are giant airbags, it it saved my life. So I agree with you. If I was in an older car, I would have died. Because I and I and you know what? I was a dumb kid and I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. And on an ironic twist, skits, you probably get a laugh out of this. Um, you two, Commander. The first cop on the scene was the man yesterday um, asking me to talk about politics. <laughs> and because my uncle is Caucasian, he I had a full concussion. He grabbed me and he was like, you were not wearing your seat belt. <laughs> and all the high school kids were like, you're not allowed to yell at him. They didn't know that was my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> because he was a white guy and they're screaming at him like, don't touch him. <laughs> then my dad came out and they both yelled at me. <laughs> oh, that was a bad. Yeah, I got in a major car accident in a Volvo saved my life. So you're you're right. And this was in the 90s. But even with the 90s technology, uh, Volvos are just giant airbags. Trying to remember the explosive, the name of the explosive that they have in the airbags. It's some nitrogen compound where it just releases a ton of nitrogen. Uh, something azide. But, um, oh, yeah, I'm trying to think, yeah, the oh, azide, azide, or whatever. Again, Phoenix, um, our, our resident scientist. She knows. <laughs> I just can't pronounce it. <laughs> Oy, the olden dos. Oy, the old That's days. That's not it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I reach this um, weird impasse when I'm smoking where um, if I don't wear my glasses, I literally cannot see. And the older I get, I cannot be in denial of that I need to wear my glasses. I remember I first taught myself how to cut gemstones, and I only needed a 10 times loop. By the time I cut the last one back in 2018, I needed a 30 times loop to do just as good a job. You know, I, the older the older I get, I feel the wear and tear because I was one of those people who I felt that I was invincible when I was younger. <laughs> I I got in a car and at well, I got in a motorcycle accident on Las Vegas Boulevard. Literally slid forty feet, stood up at a bus stop and lit up a cigarette. Like <laughs> I thought I was invincible. I just had leather on. Let's be real. Like everyone's like, oh, why do you have this leather collection? Because I because <laughs> leather will save your life. For and it real. looks good. It looks good on on certain weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but the older I get, like I feel the wear and tear. I was I talk about my car accident all the time because it ruined my knees. <laughs> it ruined my knees. And the older I get, I realize that I'm not invincible. That's why I don't drive as fast. I don't go as fast. I don't purchase vehicles that go 200 miles an hour anymore. My knees have been shit since the age of 20, actually. Uh, yeah, my, my knees took a took a beating from yeah, several years as a paratrooper. Oh my gosh, that that's just I can imagine that's just hell on the body. That's like being a professional athlete. Yeah, just throwing yourself against the ground again and again and again. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I I um I have this idiotic dream of jumping out of a plane with a parachute that I that I'm going to make. And it's because I <laughs> I um I went bungee jumping and I lived. <laughs> And I didn't puke or pass out because everyone's like, oh, gosh, this guy is going to 
puke. Everyone was talking lots of trash, and I survived, and I was laughing the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no shame with knowing how fast one should drive a car or a sewing machine. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Life um, crashing, like, I, I, I can't say, um, like, um, I know. I'm not going uh, If I do jump out of a plane, it will be raided. It will be an actual real parachute. <laughs> they, they don't, don't they don't let yabos like me jump out of planes by themselves anyways. <laughs> There's literally laws again. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up. I looked it up. I would have to find um um Anyone who is willing to let me jump out of a, a plane with my own parachute isn't worth going to. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> There's one bridge in Idaho where it's legal to base jump off at. It's the only one in the country. Really? Wow. Interesting. I did not... Yeah, because anytime when I lived in um, downtown Los Angeles, every once in a while, somebody would base jump from the U.S. Bank building and oh, no. you would see them, you'd see them jump and they'd be in their frog suit and everybody's like, that's gnarly. Well, the LAPD would literally be, <laughs> Just and they're dumb because LAPD headquarters is, is two blocks from that building. <laughs> they're just going to wait for you on the ground. <laughs> and they literally keep like all the SWAT team gear and everything downtown, all the tanks, like ev like the FBI is in downtown LA, the, the ATF. So you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but people still do it all the time. All the time. You know, they still do it's it. It's not legal anymore. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> I would imagine because anytime I've ever seen anyone base jump, they get arrested. Yeah. But that's from an LA standpoint, and everything's illegal here. Like, and if it's fun, if it tastes good, if you have to fight it, if it goes fast, it's illegal. <laughs> well, if I was in charge, base jumping off buildings would be illegal because we're the, you know, it's a safety hazard as to where you're going to land, if you're going to land if your parachute or at terminal velocity. <laughs> There's just too many people other than you in the mix. Yeah. Do you know what I think is absolute crazy? And I'm addicted to watching. I always click on those clickbait um, ones on Twitter, especially. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it's when the, the people, when they take stupid selfies before they pass away. Oh yeah. What would like there was one guy who climbed up on the shard in the UK for anyone who's ever been to England it's literally the building that looks like a giant candle and he died. There was um again someone who climbed up on the US Bank building because it's the tallest building on the west coast. Guys, it's the tallest building on the west coast because it's on a hill. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um he died as well. And there's a bunch of people all around the world. Like, I'm addicted to watching those. Like, I don't know what would compel a person to take a... Like, like I love taking crazy shots. But I'm not going to die doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I spent an hour setting up that shot of me clapping for myself. But it didn't involve me jumping out of a plane or... <laughs> I thought that was a really well done shot. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think about people that do um, like that parkour? Again, I'm addicted to watching videos on Twitter of people who like they'll be in New York or somewhere where buildings are close, but they're jumping over high rise buildings. That's, That's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I mean, I'm born goofy. I'm I'm born goofy. So I know I would be that one guy that said, oh, oh, and fell. And then you're, you know, telling lies at my funeral. Actually, my grandfather's best friend, when he was growing up, wound up dying that way, jumping from roof to roof. That's crazy. Really? Sounds like he would there. tell me the no. stories. 
it's like it sounds like a lot of the stories my grandmother told me in Spanish. She would tell me like a bunch of stories, and I'm like, man, y'all were lit back in the day. <laughs> like they make people seem so subdued in the early 1900s, and they were just like us. They were just like us. <laughs> in a lot of ways. So what was the story? Why was he uh, <laughs> jumping from roof to roof? Because um, that's just what they did to get around quicker and not have to walk in the shit of the streets. Because back then, in the old country, there was shit all over the street. <laughs> <laughs> that's why um, high heels were invented. And butchers, too. Could you imagine butchers with their high heels on? Look at all. <laughs> like they're on a runway. <laughs> keep the entrails off my off my suit. <laughs> Thank you very much. Could you imagine? You know, um, whenever I look at old-timey photos, because I'm over-analytical, the one thing I picture is the smell. So if you go, like, pre-indoor um, plumbing, what would you say? Keep the in mind. street smelled like shit because people threw it outside and into the gutters. And then if you're going before automobiles were commonplace, then the streets were overflowing in the smell of and the sight of cow shit. And most of the pictures that you see were taken after the cities came and cleaned it up. And right after, because they would do that now and then. And then, you, you know where we get the term the loo from, right? During the War of the yeah. Roses. Your shit was literally the property of the British state. Because they would use it to get the nitrates out of it to make saltpeter. That's disgusting. <laughs> See, I'm so I I'm so modernized where I'm like, ew, that's gross, but no, that's science. <laughs> yeah. What are the reasons? I actually just for <laughs> fun, I actually <laughs> took the topsoil out of my backyard. I was digging a garden, right? So I took and I processed all the dirt from like taking up the grass, and I actually got saltpeter out of it. Oh yeah. That's like not um, a lot, but when we were kids, um, we used to get heavy magnets and go to the playground and take out as much iron as we could out of the sand. It's like little amounts would come out, but if you get a um, a magnet and throw it in the sand, all the heavy elements stick to the the magnet. It's fun. If you get bored, <laughs> go and try it. <laughs> Coming out there with a big old neodymium magnet and dragging it through. Oh man, we lived. We would come to school with Magnet. We were geeks. See, kids, this was pre-internet. <laughs> we actually had to use our brain. <laughs> I recently <laughs> saw something in a show where this guy was like, "No, nah, man, I'm from a different era. I actually had to use my brain." But I was like on the cusp. I was from that that generation where we had toys, so we like didn't necessarily have. We weren't from like. The wooden horse generation where they had to they actually had to use their imagination you know so but the reason i brought up the old timey photos is because every time i see an 1800s picture the first thing i picture is how bad everyone smelled but eventually you would you would just get used to that smell oh, imagine yeah. imagine if you were a time traveler more than being scared of stepping on something first off you would show up somewhere and they'd look at your teeth and know you're not from there at least if you went to the past, you know, or, you know, like it would be the Marty McFly thing where you show up because Doc dressed you like a cowboy and you look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but you're, 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 you're right. Like I, I remember, you know, we'd be in the field for, you know, two, three weeks at a time and not have a shower and you don't notice it so much. And then as soon as you get home, you get back and you take a shower and then you go to talk to your buddy who's hadn't taken a shower yet. You're like, oh, good God. Yeah, you smell <laughs> like death. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, that has to be um, a survival mechanism. Human beings, like, like at a certain point, you go nose blind. Like people who live, 
I grew up around um, people who smoked. I would go to people's houses who didn't smoke and they would be like, kid, you reek. But I didn't smell it. I didn't realize it. You know, I was nose blind, you know. <laughs> yeah. The like thing I, you, Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I remember... Like I was uh, with uh, with my girlfriend and I'd quit smoking, you know, for a significant amount of time. And then I remember some guy walking past us and just reeked of cigarettes. And like, I looked up like, how did you, like, how did you kiss me when I smelled like that? That's vile. Agreed. I, ever since I quit smoking, I think about that. And like, I was the obnoxious smoker. I would light up three feet from a door i would light up anywhere i would light up next to your baby stroller i i would light up i would walk with isaiah and smoke a cigarette and be, more than once someone was like you're a monster like but i grew up in that hillbilly era i was an idiot <laughs> it's so funny that you mentioned that i uh, had a buddy who just he came he just came back from laos like he was just visiting there his, his, his wife's from there and he brought back this pack of cigarettes I can't understand a single word that's on it, but there's a picture of a man holding a cigarette, smoking a cigarette with a baby in his arms, blowing the smoke in the baby's face. And that's like the main picture of the cigarettes. I'm like, what is going on? Oh, no worries. I might have to get up and uh, go to the uh, the little sewing room in a minute. <laughs> You're honestly, um, Commander 401, your um, animation, your graphics are unreal. I watched your last video. I felt like I was on um, your starship. Yeah. Goals. Goals. Amazing. <laughs> like, she is so talented. Yes, absolutely. That red alert, too. Yeah, I yeah. love that. I had a Star Trek question, damn it, and I completely forgot it. I need I need to start writing down my notes. I did write down in my notes though that did you know was it Diana Ross? Okay. So Diana Ross was so famous. She married a man, she moved to Europe. She came back to America. She got arrested for a DUI. She was so drunk they opened the door and she fell out. <laughs> and do you know what she said? Hmm. Do you know who I am? That was her defense. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> do you know what they did? They put her ass in jail. <laughs> the reason I say that is because Whitney Houston is quietly my hero because she got stopped. And I've told this story a hundred times. She got stopped at LAX International Airport with a pound of Maui Wowie in her purse, like not even covered. Wow. And they were like, what are you doing? This is beyond illegal. And she's like, what? I'm Whitney Houston. I can do whatever I want. They put her ass in jail. Whitney Houston was a legend. She was a legend. <laughs> Don't smoke crack, kids. Don't smoke crack. <laughs> but if you do, be Whitney Houston. No. Whitney Houston, like honestly, Whitney Houston got away with it um, because she was like what everybody wanted to be. She was that perfect color. She was skinny. She could sing. She had attitude. And what people, like, until she started giving interviews, no one knew, like, one of the reasons she was so angry is because she was coming down all the time. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> I'm, I'm famous, don't you know? I love it. Um, who was in Sweet Home, Alabama? What was her name? Was it Reese Witherspoon? Gosh, um, she's actually from Tennessee. Um, she got pulled over. And there, in, in, on the on the body cam footage, there was two cops in her face and one standing back. She she got pulled over and she was like, in her southern accent, she's like, "Do you know who I am? I put this place on the map." <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you're like, no, we know who you are. You're two points over the limit, is what you are. <laughs> Again, I don't feel sorry for people who are blotto and drive. Like I don't, I do not. I I am heartless. And we know who you, know, you are. I, You're under arrest. I used to get hammered, and not once did I ever get behind the wheel of a vehicle. I was a whiskey drinker, a heavy whiskey drinker. Man, when I took my first sip, I throw my keys like behind the washing machine. <laughs> you know, like 
<laughs> so I have no sympathy for people. Like, like I had no self control back then, and even I didn't get in behind the wheel of a vehicle. You know. So I do not feel sorry for people like that. But the Diana Ross story made me fall on the ground because here in California, people get away with that. They really do. And it's sad. Could have been Paris Hilton. But, <laughs> you know, they get, you know, I, um, Paris Hilton, I give her respect because she went to county. She went to the real smelly, like you may not make it out county, you know. So. <laughs> County um, jail in LA is more dangerous than prison because prisons are more established. You oh, know, yeah. county jail is wild, wild west. We call it fight school. And what, pe what some people don't realize is like every, you know, if they think, you know, prisons are, you know, murderers and rapists and all that. Every single one, uh, every single murderer that's in prison went through county jail. So, like, yeah. county jails ain't no joke. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Not at all. Like you, and that's the crazy thing because there's no segregation in LA County. So you could literally be someone sitting there um, for a parking ticket next to an axe murderer, a real life axe murderer, you know? <laughs> there, uh, LA County is no joke. Paris Hilton, Martha Stewart, um, there's a bunch of people who are, I'm like, you know what? Like they're scumbags, but they did their time. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This is what I, I always say that. Like, it's gross. Jail's gross. Stay out of jail. <laughs> For real. <laughs> I'm I'm one of those dorm people. Like, on one hand, I'm like ACA, you know, all cops are bad, but I grew up in a military family. So I see a point. Like, I live in Los Angeles. Like, we need cops, we need jails here. You know, but it's the over policing is the problem, you know. So the problem is, is that here the cops are way overzealous. A funny one was when a reporter was interviewing Bob Dylan and they asked about his drug problem. And he said, I don't have a drug problem. I have money. <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's so effing true, though. It's, it's sad, but true. You've got to be <laughs> it is to go right on. To go right to state or fed. Yes, that is true. You have to be like pretty bad. But our infrastructure is gone here. Like our LA like in um in downtown LA, our county prison is so bad they're closing it. And it makes me laugh because they think by closing that prison is gonna end the corruption, they're just gonna spread spread the guards in different directions. That's all. <laughs> They'll just open up another private prison somewhere else. Mm. Which um, is anti-American. You have the right to representation. If you a private prison is anti-American, but America is ran by corporations now, so like, like the old school ways are kind of dead if you think about it. But like, you have the right to be you ha like basically the state has to um, take responsibility for you, regardless if they want to or not. We're not the UK where like, um, there's been people who were caught. Like um, joining ISIS and stuff, and the UK is like, okay, you can't come back in our country. America is like, oh no, we want them. <laughs> Bring them here, please. <laughs> Por favor. Uh, what was his name? David Lynch, still in jail. He was the first one caught with the Taliban, who said Malcolm X. Uh, he was he joined. Uh, he basically went through a certain pipeline and tried to blame Malcolm X. They put him in federal prison. He got a special plane ride home and they were like, no, bro. <laughs> the only reason you're not in Gitmo is because you're an American. I'm like, Oh, they put him. Um, it's so true. So true. They put him on every newspaper. They put him on everything. Or the chap who went state's witness to the oh that's right i've been watching that too man do you know um my father was obsessed with rappers being shot but the th i think the thing that disturbed him was black men killing each other at such an alarming rate like you have a certain um like lifespan if you're a, a rapper in a certain genre 
because you don't hear about Christian rappers getting shot. You know, I know a lot of rappers in um, Germany. They're not getting shot. <laughs> I had a friend in Hamburg when I was a kid. We're still friends. And he sends me German rap still to this day. I don't speak German, but it's awesome. <laughs> I rock. If you, if you ever see me on my headphones rocking out certain things, I'm listening to the most obscure stuff. Little Romstein. You know, it's so funny. Um, his cousin from the same family who was born in America is obsessed with Rammstein. And I yeah. was the only one stupid enough to go see it with him. Obsessed with oh, him. Oh, that would have, I bet that was a show. They put on a show. <laughs> oh, man. They're next to, like, have you ever heard of the band Sabathon? Sabathon? It's more of a modern day band. I was trying to get my son into metal. So I geared him <laughs> towards, like, I was like, okay, find a band. And he found a band. And I got all into Sabathon. They have a huge catalog. I love Sabathon. I want, I went and saw them in Los Angeles. These mofos brought a tank out in the effing Staples Center, which is now the crypto whatever. Um, um, Sabathon was amazing. They put on such an amazing. They're they're more they're hardcore history buffs. So a lot of their songs are about World War Two, World War One, about specific people, about like specific like. There's this one guy who wouldn't rat on his um on his other operatives, so they put him in Auschwitz, and they'd go check on him. They'd be like, "Hey, you gonna rat yet?" And he was like, "No," and he died in Auschwitz because he wouldn't rat. He would not rat. And um, Sabathon made a song about it. Such a good song. And other prisoners in Auschwitz were telling on him too, trying to score points with the um, guards. Such a good song. Such a good song. Interesting. Check it out. They're like, because I'm such a homer and I'm so stuck in my ways, I do not. Like, that's why I always say I'm looking for new music. Because I listen to Megadeth and Slayer. I still listen to 90s rap. Like I, I still listen to Easy E. Like <laughs> I like like so I'm a total homer when I like <clears throat> I still excuse me, I still listen to Black Label Society. Like, you know, I'm stuck in my ways. So I'm all about like please introduce me to some new music, please. <laughs> <laughs> But do you think you reach a certain age where you get stuck in your ways? Like, because I, when I was younger, I used to always say, because I come from such an older family, I would always say, these people have plateaued. Do you think that's human nature? <laughs> I I definitely think it's human nature for our, you know, the next generation or for the, the older generation to always go to the next generation's oh. music and say, this is terrible. I mean, you know, like they, they, you know, we, we think Justin Bieber sucks. They're going to think the next thing sucks. And True. It's, it is what it is. You know, there are the, the, there are the few that, you know, can appreciate the music from the past. And there are the few of the older, you know, the older generations that can appreciate the music from the future. Yeah. You know, it's, it's to be able just to appreciate music for being an art form in and amongst itself is it's, you know, not just a, a trendy thing that uh, to listen to. Uh, Do you think? Um, okay, like I used to go to a lot of shows. I have some of the greatest memories of my life are being in deafening situations. But the one thing I wasn't doing was holding up a cell phone. Do you think um, recording everything diminishes the experience of life, like of what we used to call life? I think so. You're you're not in the moment. You're you're trying to capture the moment, but you're not in the moment. You're you, at least from what I feel, like you're you're not experiencing it. it. It might as well just be someone else watching it on YouTube. Because I'll tell you, like I'm an insomniac, and sometimes when I stay up all night, I'll go outside and watch the sunrise over the mountain. Like it's to me, it's beautiful. You know, when you see the pinks and the blues, do people do that anymore? <laughs> like, do do they? And I don't go. I leave my phone in here. I'm literally leaning on my truck, drinking coffee, you know, like 
smoking a J in front of my house. I would love to see my neighbor's rings because I smoke in front of my house. I would love to see the footage they capture of me. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I go camping, you know, uh, you know, with the kiddo and all that, like one of my favorite things to do after everything's all said and done, you know, the campfire's done and, you know, the whatever is just after everyone's asleep, just go and stare at the star, be alone, yes. stare at the stars, yes. you know, just be in the moment. It's one of the reasons I bought a um, telescope was because um, it wasn't even um staring at the sky was the whole experience of being outside and just being quiet and listening to nature and i live next to the freeway so that's super calming <laughs> you know hearing cars and like or hearing my my neighbors i used to have some really exciting neighbors behind me they would fight over everything and like they didn't want to fight in front of their children so they'd go in the backyard and passive aggressively um argue with each other I'd smoke a cigarette and be like, oh, I wonder what they hate each other about today. <laughs> They're going to kill each other about today. They were lit, though. They were lit. I miss those guys. The neighbors behind me now are like, they're weird. <laughs> well, I can't figure out if the person who lives there hates his life or they have someone living in a granny pod in the backyard. Jesus somebody's living in a granny park and i don't like that's just and the sad thing is if they're paying rent they're probably paying like two grand a month oh my god welcome to california yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it is a free show but like the sad part about it was they started getting abusive to uh, towards each other and i knew the guy he was an arrogant piece of garbage so i thought it was him because his wife was really meek, but they're the same size. I later found out that it was her punching him in the face repeatedly. Oh, wow. She was the aggressor. Yeah. And he would stand there like a just taking it punch. They they got exciting after a while to the point where I would call like my dad. I would call my cousin, be like, Y'all gotta come over here. These guys are gonna kill each other one day, dude. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know it's for the second we um sign off i'm gonna remember my star trek question uh, you were talking about i don't know were you talking about when you were pulling out your vhs's and yeah you have a good memory just like i do i was standing right there and i can't remember what it was oh, that's got to be oh that uh, yeah i was about to say it's 10 how the king's doing oh they won they won oh, okay so now at the sports decks, the Kings beat the Buffalo Sabres six to two. Back to you, Skits Crasher. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm rusty. Like this Confederate Colt. Much <laughs> like this Confederate Colt. Do you know it's legal for me to wear that thing? And I found it at a gun show because um, a bunch of guys walked in wearing um, wearing wearing these on their waist, and the cops were like, uh uh-uh. uh. And they were like, no, it's legal. And the cops went over. They they had, you know, the conference, like referees. They're like, all right, you guys can walk in here. Because <laughs> <laughs> black powder firearms are legal. But I guarantee you, like, if I walked around with my Enfield, they'd call the SWAT team on me. At least here. Walk to a bank, you're like, hi. <laughs> That's one thing um, when people talk about like, and I know this is a hairy conversation when they, they talk about the Constitution. They were talking about guns that take a good solid three minutes, four minutes to load if you know what you're doing. Muskets. and <laughs> Eight if you're me. <laughs> <laughs> you get distracted like, did I put powder down there? Where did I put that ramrod? Where is my piece of cotton? Where is the, like, you know. The battle's over me. by the time you reload. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is abuse happens from all sides. Believe all women is a lie. Hear and validate claims from all. I, I agree. Mm-hmm. I absolutely agree. You can buy a muzzle loader by mail, no background check, even if you're not valid. No. I've always wondered about that because I get lost on Amazon, and all the time, my first question is, 
how is this legal? <laughs> <laughs> or like they're at like I keep on getting advertised this thing on um on um uh, Twitter. It's like it's basically one of those diamond things where you can break a window instantly. And it's like a it's a it's a very heavy baton. And my first thought was that's not legal. Yeah. <laughs> that cannot be legal. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of like expandable, you know, please expandable batons or like yeah, a felony. That's what I'm saying. Or even like my six cell mag flashlights. I don't think they're legal. But that's an old, like, again, I don't know if that that's just like what people used to tell me to like scare me because I own a ton of them. <laughs> it's a flashlight. It's a stinking flashlight. You know. I told you when before I went out to get some soda that it's legal to make a muzzle loading black powder gun. It's just not legal if it's a repeating weapon. Mm -hmm. Oh. Like the brass. <laughs> I mean, I have my uh, six cell right here. I wonder, if, is there such a thing? And, you know, this is, you know, a lot of ignorance in firearms here, but would there is there a possibility of there ever being, like, a repeating black powder weapon? Is it a thing? The, you, the, the problem, yeah, it's called when it fires in a revolver and it catches everything on fire, that you got a repeater. You better hold so, on. Yeah. You better hold on for dear life. Yeah. Um, it only happens when you misfire and everything gets set on fire. So so if you're repeating you're 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 making a mistake. <laughs> States may vary but like in Virginia it was legal to make a black powder single muzzle loader weapon. It's it's legal here too. Oh, it's, so single shot. Okay, that's the It's totally legal. I always get get ads for fuel filters that threads onto a muscle of a guy. <laughs> I get oh the, my god! I get I get weird ads, but um, this is supposedly illegal, but it's just a flashlight. But it can Big also be <laughs> it also could be you know, if you need it in the third inning, you could use it too. <laughs> But these are the old school cop flashlights. And I mean, they said these things were illegal 20, 30 years ago. And I don't even know the law anymore. It's a stinking flashlight, you know? For real. That's why I'm not scared to flash shit on stream. Like, it's a <laughs> flashlight. Yeah, Gatling gun. And they're probably worth more because it's real metal, you know? <laughs> Plastic like now. Nah. That's the thing, um, because I live in earthquake country, we have to have reliable equipment laying around, you know. I always check the battery of all my flashlights. I I make sure um, I have water, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. I always jokingly say, oh, I have ammo, so I don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to be prepared in earthquake country. Like, you have to be prepared. What did I do with my hat? I had a bunch of floppy hats, but I've been cleaning in here lately, which basically just means like I misplace everything. <laughs> but I'm trying my hardest to um, cut down my hoarding. Yeah, exactly. You get a Gatling gun. That's exactly. <laughs> that happened to me in the rookie days when I didn't know. Um, how to handle black powder because my I am like, oh, let's just put a ton in there and make a bomb in your hand and see what happens. I learned very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> the, those flashlights are no joke. You you could um, leave a mark on a human being. You definitely could hit somebody. <laughs> if you hit someone, that's the definition. Their skull. <laughs> oh, yeah. They called it flashlight therapy. That's old school jail terms. You know, like if somebody, the cops would come at you with their flashlights. <laughs> I make sure my battery power radios always have good batteries in them because the electrical infrastructure is 80 years old around here. And you know what's really funny? It's I want to say it's almost that same age around here, too. We discovered that with the fires. They were like, oh, we haven't fixed this since the Truman administration. <laughs> I was upstairs when I found out my human got extra supplies, but fire season is scary. Yes, you have to be prepared. Like, 
Um, you have to. You have to. Especially um, when you live anywhere with a fire, earthquake. I need more ammo. I have about 10,000 rounds. My... <laughs> My dad went through this weird phase. Um, also, there's not too many ways out of here. <laughs> I know. I live at the bottom. I live in, like in a giant valley. I think about that, too. I'm like, I have a giant truck. I can fight my way out. <laughs> Yay, you're home safe. I was, one, I was about to send you a private message. <laughs> we'll send out the posse to look for her. Um, <laughs> My when they were um, California, it gets stricter and stricter on gun laws. And about I don't know, I want to say ten years ago, they made some restriction on bullets, and they said, "Okay, we're going to do this in seven months." Every week, my father would go and purchase a box of bullets every week <laughs> until I stopped him. I said, "What are are are? Do you know something I don't know?" Is are, are zombies going to attack or something? Are aliens going to invade? Are the Chinese going to send balloons? Do you know something I don't know? <laughs> yes, like, son. One day China's going to send us over some constant balloons. That is one stereotype that was real. He was like, I call it non-paranoid. That's That was a real thing. I lived my whole life with CCTV. Like He, he had security cameras before it was cool. Um, so sorry, guns, very weird day. Yeah, I'm so sorry. That's one nice thing about Pennsylvania because of how many roads there are, at least five different ways to get in and out of a place. Not really, there's no such thing as too much ammo. I agree with that one. <laughs> it was just a shout out if you need us to call recon. I'm not kidding you, I will call the effing Portland um, cops. I made quite a few friends when I worked at the um, Carl's Jr. in downtown, and there's still one who I'm Facebook friends with, and she's a scary uh, sheriff, and she wants she's been wanting to date me for like 20 years. I grew up around that crowd; like, I would never date a um, I would never date a sheriff. <laughs> I that's just me. I, I'm not biased. I'm not telling people what to do. But because Stay I grew away up, from those. <laughs> <laughs> I remember driving through Pennsylvania and some guys shooting his rifle like he was hunting on the side of the road. Do you know I saw that in Georgia and I thought I was on a different planet? It's only too much when you gotta warn the firefighter. <laughs> That's one thing I miss about being out in the country. Like on the man, we don't even know what a bonfire is. Go to the Midwest. <laughs> they they are like collecting pallets for like six months. <laughs> so my phone wasn't charging very well and I went to go to work and I used the backup charger and I noticed that the charger isn't working and all of a sudden my phone stops. Phones, are, it's been a bad technology kind of week lately. Oh man, yeah. This morning I woke up. And I'd realized that not only had like I not plugged in my phone to charge overnight, but I had buried it inside of like you know my blankets and pillows, so the, completely slept. You know, the, there was no alarm, but yeah, so slept through it. I woke up, like oh, I should uh, let somebody know. <laughs> first time I've, I like it's the first time that's happened. Like it's amazing how it does. It doesn't happen more often, you know. No, I, I, um, I'm completely distracted by what Phoenix said. No. <laughs> um, I would never date someone with the power to put me in jail. So no man or woman, no. I like because you get emotional in relationships, and I've been in long term relationships where you look at someone and you're like, you're still here. What are you doing here? So no, and because I grew up in a law enforcement, um, like military world no especially a man no not a share no no i would never uh date <laughs> and that's not a dig on you skits crasher i still love you 
<laughs> I'm not see, and that's the thing. Like, I have my own personal politics, but I would never uh I don't hate all cops. I don't hate like I'm not one of those idiots who lump all people into certain things. I do miss um good bonfires as well. The game commission here actually sets up decoys to try to catch those guys. <laughs> I've seen those, yeah. Like they have like the, like the old fake like deer elk or something on the side of the road and they monitor it. <laughs> Recently. <laughs> so I worked outside today with the phone and it started snowing. Yikes. And you know you would not believe how many deer carcasses and litter the road. I've seen more deer carcasses than I care to. Um, Commander, do you know what's really sad here in California? It's like that with um, big cats. Because people hit them with their cars. All the, It's so gross. Especially when I drive to the beach because it's unincorporated land heading west. And also people were being crazy. Do you think it's the pull of the moon? I don't believe in any of that stuff, but my, my same uncle who was a cop, he would always say when there was a full moon, there were more arrests. And I, I believe he's kind of an atheist as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it was more of an observation than, uh, than science. Could you date somebody that has the ability to throw you in uh, jail skits? Yeah, I mean, I have. <laughs> I guess I have a bad image in my head because my brother's wife, who he's still married to, she was a, um, she is an evil human being. <laughs> because they were so much older than me, I was like their child. I wasn't their sibling. I was like their child. They have kids that I could have went to high school with, you know? And so my brother's wife, she was just a formidable human being. And so I always have this negative image of women sheriffs in my head. Because she was a rough and tough mullet wearing kind of woman. <laughs> <laughs> to the point there are where we, definitely those. <laughs> to the point where we told her to cut her sheriff mullet in like 2000. We were like, hey, the, the hockey hair is way out of style. <laughs> And I try not to let um, groups of people ruin everything, you know? I try not to. doesn't always work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I will tell people, like, um, it just depends on what you're talking about. But, like, I don't represent all atheists. I don't represent all, you know, pick a category. So when certain people come at me, I'm like, you don't even represent the thing you're saying. You represent your side of it, your clique, your version of it. But there's um, atheists who are turfs. There's flat earthers who are atheists. There's atheists, you know, who are um, Nazis and people, you know, there's, you know, just, atheism is, is, is um, one simple um, conclusion. Everything else, everything else is negotiable, you know. Yeah, the the only question you know <laughs> atheist answers is, do you believe in a god? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and the and, and you know what Phoenix is? I think that's what happened to me. Um, um, it made me really cold towards what I call like like not like. I I did become a token, and then it made me really cold. But I, I realized really quick that not all people are like the people that I'm talking about right now. Because I went out in YouTube world and I discovered a ton of um, um, people in Malaysia that felt like I did. People in India. People, you know, you know what I'm saying? So um, if you're myopic, um, it's easy to fall in rabbit holes on YouTube. And to get radicalized, do you know um, commun communication is key? And my ex-wife and I, we have an open communication about our son because he can easily be radicalized on YouTube because he watches a lot of right-wing stuff. And because he has autism, um, Skits experienced it last week. He'll walk up and say some crazy stuff. <laughs> but you know what? Um, I know so much now. So, we, so much. We have to, uh, you know, 
we we have we have we discuss what he watches you know because it's so easy to get radicalized on um youtube it's happened to me i had to take a step back someone that i love and respect fell down um she lives in rural oregon and she fell down the trump train and she had a psychiatrist tell her to stop watching youtube <laughs> She was like, stop watching that alt-right stuff and it'll change your life, you know? For and real? she did. She did and she calmed down. You know? I quit watching a lot of the radical stuff and it, it uh, hey, Butterfly, how's it going? Hey, Butterfly. Hey, hey. It's been a, it's been a rootin', tootin', shootin' kind of night. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, speaking of which, I should probably be hitting the bed here shortly. All myself. right, I will. I will sign off. I just absolutely love uh, streaming with you guys, but I, I am pulling an Elvis tonight. I'll put, the, <laughs> I'll put the harmonica down. It's because I came out here late. I got, I got um, a bunch of layers on, so I came prepared tonight. <laughs> Well, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming to my live stream. Um, I had major technical difficulties. <laughs> I am so glad that we that we're at this point because, like, honestly, YouTube would not uh, let me upload my video. I almost didn't even make a stream for tonight. I was so pouty and such a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank everybody for showing up. I absolutely appreciate all of you like we've uh you, you you guys uh have really got me to want looking forward to monday night you know so i thank every single one of you and with that being said skits do you have anything to show hey just uh appreciate you having me on and i uh, i look forward to the the next time you do uh I'm like, god the soon god the soon. <laughs> i got i have to you know when it's time for season two because you know, Godless Sewing at the Godless Sewing channel that um, that was early long haired before I knew how to brush my eyebrows. You know, <laughs> I was doty eyed, I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I'm grizzled, I'm a grizzled veteran now. <laughs> Commander, are you still there? Do you know every time I say that, I feel like I'm um, like I'm reporting for duty. Ensign Sewing reporting for Dewey for duty. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night, Butterfly. Have a great night. <laughs> uh, good night. Um, do you have anything you want to show? I loved your last video. Yeah, I'm going to be. If you go and look at it, it basically says what I'm going to be working on that was just like a preview to feed the algorithm because the algorithm is. Hungry, hungry, hungry. One time I left the algorithm alone and I went from getting 600 views on every video to about 30. Oh, so yeah, Jesus. I know how to feed the algorithm, but I'm working on basically making a video mocking the Trump profits. And nice. that, that, you, you, you've you watched it, um, Godless Sewing, where I uh, show how Pinky co-opted the um, Federation um, logo. And then I have um, yes. Patrick yes, I, Stewart I, come by and say, what you're doing is immoral. It's unethical <laughs> and I will fight it. <laughs> and I plan to basically have as much fun as I can mocking some of the biggest... Um, uh, a snake oil salesman, charlatans, and the tombstone slash um, Bigfoot, the one that you saw there in that video. Obviously, you know, he was there's actually creepy Putin connections with these assholes. So I'm going to be covering that and a lot of other stuff. It's going to be kind of like a comedy documentary, and it's going to take a really long time to do. So I'll probably have the story time with Mippet, where I have a, um, I wish I had the video. I have baby penguins now. And um, yeah. Mippet from the Shells Aww. is going to be reading a story 
to the baby penguins. Aw. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I love it. That's awesome. Well, I'm Godless Sewing of the Godless Sewing Channel. I thank everybody for viewing. Skids, see, Skids remembers back when I was a rookie in all Dodi. Do you know that was like a year and a half ago? And I'd already been streaming for like a year. Now, like, I'm like season two Londo Malari wearing my dark vest with my hair all high. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I have become jaded. I need to go. I do need to return back to the Godless Sewing at the Godless Sewing channel. <laughs> But with that being said, I thank everybody for showing up. You guys are absolutely awesome. And I'll be here next week for the same uh, same sewing mayhem, same bad time, same bad channel. So, like I always say, reinforce your scenes, be yourself, and I will definitely, definitely see you next time. Have fun. <laughs> Rock out with your clock out.